Conference Day Bite Podcast, episode number four, man. Hey, before we get to my guest, we gotta stop this shit, man. If you hit me up or I hit you up and we engage the conversation about being on the show, and you say it's good Friday night, and I drive from Eight Mile Beach daily to the motherfucking East Side, and your ass don't show up, and then you don't even fucking have the nut, the cur- the courtesy. I'm fucking up. To even hit me up and say I'm not making it. Like, then you post it on Facebook. Because you, you fucking up because you talking about me and shit. No, I'm no. I'm supposed hey. to show up last no, week. No, he, no, he can't. He good. <laughs> but, dog, niggas, don't show up. Don't call me. Just let me know. Before I get out the crib, let me know, hey, I'm not coming. We save gas money. If you don't do that shit, you got to cash at me some gas money. Or well, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> but I got my dog, man, POG in the building. What up, What up, dog? though? What up, though? I met my boy through uh, my homeboy Cheesy, man. He was uh, recording uh, some music, and I was asking him, you know, where he was recording it. He was like, my dog, POG crib. I'm like, shit, you think I can go over and record? He's like, yeah, man, just hit him up. This is his number. I called him. Shit, everything been Gucci ever since. That was like fucking 2012, man, so it's been a little minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. So uh, we gonna get into your uh, to your little journey, man. Let me know how it was, you know, growing up as a a young POG. One thing before we get there, you gotta you gotta always remember to say the giant. Oh my bad, it's POG, POG the, the giant. giant. We going later on. We gonna get into the name, man. But POG yeah. the giant. Tell me how uh, you know, saying a young a young one was growing up. Man, I grew up on um, in the four eight two one five off Mac. Grand Mac, a lot of people know about it, you know what I'm saying? They used to call my street Crack City. Okay, okay. I grew up in the crack era. Yeah. And it was it was it was crazy, but I had both parents there. Okay, for you sure. You know what I'm sure. saying? So it kinda kept me off the streets, but you know, when you get that age Yeah. Shit can't Yeah. Can't but music it. was always a part of my was <laughs> <laughs> going on with trumpets and and motherfucking keyboards and guitars and shit. And I used to yeah. be like, I ain't fucking with that shit. Yeah. I used to play the violin, though. Okay, okay. Don't tell nobody. But I done told everybody. <laughs> but, but I ain't bush. I used to be hitting niggas in the head with the motherfucking violin case on the bus, talking okay. shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man. Just, I really, you know how I got to playing the violin on some real, real shit? <laughs> what up, though? Man, it was this girl. We was like in fifth grade. <laughs> this girl, she had big ass titties. She was the only girl in <laughs> like school with grade. titties and shit. <laughs> in fifth grade, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't too many girls in fifth grade with no titties. Hell yeah. And me and my homeboy, my homeboy, uh, the name, we call him Tom and shit. Man, this nigga, uh, they came in and they was like asking people who want to be in the um, orchestra. Yeah. Oh, girl, then got up. <laughs> Went over there. Me and him looked at each other. Nigga, he was on the cello, I was on the violin. <laughs> Nigga had been playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've been musically inclined ever since, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but for most, man, for a girl is always the reason for everything, kind of, yeah. dog. Especially being a little nigga growing up, dog. Yeah. But you say your, your, your dad bringing in shit, like, you know, what was your parents playing on Saturday mornings, cleaning up? You know what I'm saying? You know you got the music blasting. I'm going to tell you like this. The old dude used yeah. to sing, man. Okay. So he wasn't playing shit. He used to sit on the fucking front porch. And just, yeah, I'm talking like he used to do all type of shit. Like, man, he used to do this one thing with his hands, yeah. make this horn horn sound yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and like my old dude, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? He had kind of, like, he was chubby. Yeah, yeah. He'd sit on the porch <laughs> with his shirt off and shit. <laughs> sing his ass <laughs> and off. Singing his ass off. But when he used to barbecue, I ain't gonna lie, he used to play all that blues shit, like uh, ZZ Hill. Okay. Um, uh, Lil Milton. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobby, uh, Bobby Blue Bland, and it was, uh, what's my man name? Uh, I ain't lying, my sisters and brothers are gonna kick my ass for this <laughs> shit, cause I can't even think of this nigga name, but, uh. But that's how I usually go, man, cause I remember, like, growing up, you really don't, you be in tune to the music that your parents play, and then that's yeah. when you start finding the music that you like. But I had a cousin, like, my uh, parents owned this two, two family flat, and I had a cousin. You know what I'm saying? She stayed upstairs and like, you know, back in the days, everybody split my pants up and shit. <laughs> For real. But she used to play shit like, uh, um, like the Gap Band. Okay. Uh, what was that song? Do You On A Ride? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that type <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? We was little kids and shit. Man, cause I ain't told the story like, man, I didn't even know shit about rap music because my dad was only playing old school shit. For Temptations, real? everything Motown. Oh. My mom playing Sade and... Aretha Franklin and Pay Bill. You know who uh who brought rap to uh, to my attention mm-hmm. was my brother, my older brother, because he had a rap group. Okay. Um, he and uh, K Crush. Okay. It was like a few few older dudes. You know what I'm saying? That I fucked with. It was this dude named Chuck and Ken. They all was older because they was older than my brother. My brother like four five years older than. Me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And they was like about three or four years older than than him. Four yeah. five. So I, I'm dealing with dudes, that, <laughs> but they brought in a record and that bitch. 
had like this look had a design on it. Yeah. It, looked, it was blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, had, it looked like the words on it looked like a candy cane. Don't you know them different color candy yeah, yeah, canes? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it said Sugar Hill on it. Oh, okay, damn, yeah. That's and them cool. motherfuckers <laughs> got to playing that shit. They got to playing that shit. And we just listened to that bitch like 10 times. Like, kept on moving that needle and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, like, they was bringing in salt pepper. But, but like, the first tape that I really, really had and I was listening to, mm-hmm. it was uh, two rappers, two different rappers. Like, it was like uh, Too Short. Okay. And Big Daddy Kane. Okay, okay, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, I, I remember. I think my mama bought me Big Daddy Kane because she heard me listening to Too Short. Yeah. And she was like, she was like, fuck that shit. Man. This is <laughs> like this little nigga in there horny. See, I had to go back, man, because I was like, man, it's funny. You're going to clown me, man. But one of, one of the first rappers I really started listening to was Hammer. Hammer. Yeah, I used to when like, Hammer first came out, man, he duh. was the hardest shit ever to me. Man. You know duh. what I'm saying? He was like, if you ever seen the first. Let's get it started video. Yeah, yeah. And he had on the troop suit. <laughs> and like the 151 Gazelles, that was the shit. Dog, I remember I tried to get the MC Hammer haircut. My days to fuck me up. All them parts of my head. Oh, bro. Oh, my God. Like, hey, let me get the hammer, Dad. I didn't go that far. I'm thinking I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the school. Nigga got roasted bad as fuck. It was... like, like I said, I grew up on Crack City. They would have been fucking us up. Man, I was getting fucked up. So uh, I had read something on Facebook that you just posted, man. Going back to the whole music shit. Yo, auntie, um, yeah, yeah, she, uh, that's that's actually my first cousin because my father oh, didn't, yeah. okay, didn't start having kids till he was like 40. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So, I got a lot of cousins that's in their 70s, yeah, 60s, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. older, you know what I'm saying? So, back in the day, back in the day, she used to, uh, write, she had she had a group called uh, Lollipops, okay, she, um. She also uh, was in that group, uh, God Mama. Mm. God Mama was signed to Boosie Collins. Mm. And, like, she taught me a lot of this stuff about the music industry. She let me know that motherfuckers would le- try to lace you. Hell yeah. She told me about a lot of different things, man. Yeah. So, those, those like, the two uh, people she really worked closely with was Boosie and David um, Ruffin? She didn't, she didn't, uh, she, she met, she met Babyface before he was on. Mm. Babyface and LA, L.A. Reed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? She done met a, a whole lot of different people. There's this one dude named Carl B. He worked with uh, Teddy Riley. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, he told me. So, Teddy, if you looking for that uh, <laughs> NPC 100, <laughs> pay that man. Because <laughs> that, <laughs> that man still got... Matter of fact, he sold it to my other home. Matter of fact, if you want to find it, because I heard you had a million dollar bounty out on it <laughs> back in the day. I don't know if you still <laughs> but look, I can get it for you. Man. All you gotta do is slide me a hundred. Yeah, it's funny though, cause like me you're talking about R&B back in the day and stuff. Me, and my cousin was at the crib last night just listening to uh, old school R&B, and you'd be surprised how many goddamn samples you find in these old school songs exactly. that rappers use. Exactly. And like, I'm thinking like the, one of the first I remember who was really using the samples of the old school was Dr. Dre. Yeah, like Dr. Dr. Dre and Dre. Snoop Dogg. And then and that's what's so crazy is like. One thing, one thing that's uh, so artistic about Dr. Dre is that he would take a sample, like a little piece, and you would never know where the fuck it came yeah. from until you listen to something one day, and then, and then like this little piece, like you'd be like, "Damn, that shit came from that." Man. Like I thought that was really them talking, yeah, and he just took it from Marvin Gaye and shit. <laughs> Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? And that shit, like that, and that take you back to like dog, cause R&B was the shit. Like man, in comparison to R&B now, it's like night and day, man. Like night and fucking day, man. Like to me, Ella May, she brought that feeling back, like yeah. uh, of the '80s. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, of the guy era. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Daniel Caesar, if you fuck with him, he cool. I never heard her. Of him. She, yeah, like, he hold it down. Oh yeah, hell yeah. He hold it down. If he never got into that trouble, dog, with Rihanna, that nigga probably be bigger than what he is now. And, and yeah, and that's why they try to deny him. Cause like uh, I was watching, um, I was looking at Fifty Cent Instagram, and he said he was like. Uh, that uh, Chris Brown and surpassed Michael Jackson. Yeah. And people was getting mad, but actually he has. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because Michael Jackson era has stopped. He yeah. didn't, but but Chris Brown has surpassed that, but he just doesn't do the humanitarian yeah, songs exactly. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, speaking of Michael Jackson, man, growing up, who was you, who you think was better, Michael Jackson or Prince? Um, like to me, they was in two different categories. Okay, okay, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I'm, like, yeah, they had their own that. lane. They had their own. Lane. They both had their own lanes. You know what I'm saying. Michael Jackson was a a cold dancer, mm-hmm. a cold dancer, and in, in the instrumentation. Oh yeah, yeah. Was just and so he was motherfucking cold. performing in heels. Like, come on, dog. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. got me a real nigga, but, but you know, but you know, he was short as hell. hell you yeah. feel me? The motherfucker out there with heels. We used to clown dudes like it. 
it's so crazy because some of the stuff that used to just be so normal, like we talk about like dudes wearing tight pants, nine yeah, and this yeah, and that. Yeah. Back in the day, dudes was running around this bitch with lace <laughs> on their motherfucking <laughs> wrist and all that shit again. But everybody was so manly back then. You look you at know those old Ozzy brother uh, pictures. Niggas got the old sheer shirts on. Man, there. come on. Sequence motherfucking jumpsuit. <laughs> the fuck is they talking about? You know what I'm saying? Man. For real, for real. Like, and then like, my, um, my, I was looking at an old school picture Matter of fact, I'm talking about my homeboy K. Crush. Okay. Uh, you know that's one of my mentors. Okay. But he was he was a a, a serious dude on yeah. our block. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And like I I looked at a picture of him back in the day on Grand Mac, and he was trying to he was running he had bought some Jordans and shit. They had got fresh. They had <laughs> some Jordans, some Levi's, some Stonewash Levi's and everything. He doing the Jordans. <laughs> he jumped in the end. Now, and look back in the day, you know they had Polaroids and shit. <laughs> So I wonder how many Polaroids oh, did they mess up to, to get this picture? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But he do it like this and shit. You know Man. what I'm saying? But like his pants was tight to the motherfucker. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just and I was just like, oh, so for real shit. Like motherfuckers been wearing tight pants and this and that. It's just about what you prefer and shit. You yeah, know? cause me and Matt, me and Cheese were talking about that shit. How goofy we was looking like from that. In that bag shit, man. Man, I was wearing size. I was 140 pounds wearing size 38 jeans. But look, Come on, dog. <laughs> I, you probably was one of them dudes walking around here with that motherfucking too tall T. Oh, yeah, tall T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going yep. damn near to your knees. <laughs> Nigga, that bitch look like Soldier Boy, man. That shit man. was ridiculous, man. I remember I was riding with my cousin. We seen a little dude. He had on tall T, man. This bitch was so long. He was like, man, this nigga running around with a nightgown. Dog. Only thing that fit is the motherfucking shoes. You got two big jeans. Got the belt, nigga. What? Man, that shit was ridiculous, dog. I'm looking back. Too big. Man, everything that just looking stupid. Up, you thought you were fresh as hell looking in the mirror. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to kill it today. <laughs> well, shit, talking about uh, those days, man. What high school you went to? How Like, what was your high school uh, days man, like? I went, um, my high school days was like Gladiator House or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was so for real shit. Like, I went from junior high. And junior high, man. What junior high you go to? What school? I went to uh, Jackson. Okay, Jackson. Jackson okay. Middle School. Some yeah. of them call it McNair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I went there. And like, uh, I was an honor student, actually, yeah. okay. you know what I'm saying? In sixth, seventh grade, I was an honor student. Mm -hmm. And then like, it was this teacher, for everybody who know when, uh, to the teachers, when you don't like a student, do not deny him his motherfucking curriculum. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because on some real shit, like it was this one teacher, man, she didn't like me. She didn't like me. I was in the honors class. She said she was going to give me a Damn. D. So I'm going to make sure that I give you a D. Fuck. <laughs> and she got me kicked out the honors class. And I went from the honors class to the worst class in the school. Damn. And I just, you know what I'm saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Man, it's crazy because I be telling, uh, it's crazy you say that shit because I, I coach uh, basketball. So with my girls and my boys, I tell them all the time, like, for the most part, these teachers don't give a fuck about y'all. Yeah. And this and that, I was like, don't involve yourself in that. I was like, I done went through that. And I had to tell him, like, like, look, this is what you do. You find something that you like and this and that. And, woo -woo -woo. Yeah. and he told me he had a music class. I was like, shoot. I was like, you always around music when you come over my house. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and, you know, just learn about the piano and this and that. And woo -woo. I was like, that'll leave. He had a couple problems, but I did this. And he said Yo, he, yeah. he was messing with the keyboard and all of that in the school. And, and, you know, but it's just about fine, taking yourself out of out of all of that, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be some fucked up people yeah. in this world, but you got to ignore them and find the positive about the negative. Hell yeah, yeah, because that's what, man, kids be needing those mentors and those people who could just look out for them and tell them what's real. Dina, the Dina students was like, oh, we going to get care off the team and shit. I'm like, dog, she yeah. did one thing. School just started three <laughs> weeks ago. Like, what the fuck is like, wrong with you? you? Once you kick her off the team, what then what? She going to be at the crib. That's when kids start doing stupid shit. Yeah. So shit, what high school you at went to? You said shit was the motherfucking. Oh, uh, the Gladiator House. Yeah. Man, I'm oh, so for real shit. Like, like you got to start with junior high with me. Okay. On some for real shit, cause I went to, uh, I got kicked out of junior high. Okay. Like I went from being an honor student to getting kicked out of junior high okay. for a pistol. Yeah, damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> damn. I ain't bullshit. <laughs> I was on some real shit. Like I was <laughs> in the seventh grade, man. I was in the Tell seventh. Like. <laughs> yeah, for real. I failed the seventh grade. This was so fucked up. Like I was, I was an honor student. I failed the seventh grade. I had to go to summer school. Yeah. Then I got in the eighth grade, and I was still in that bad class. Yeah. And then so we just in there and like. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was always prepared, you know what I'm saying, to to uh, crack jokes on motherfuckers. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got, I got uh, seven sisters and one brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, somebody always talking about Hell somebody. Yeah, for real. So, I'm always ready. I'm using jokes that my brother didn't use on me <laughs> or, my little, or my sister and shit. So, and shit that I'm coming up with. So, I'm cracking jokes on motherfuckers. And this one girl got mad. 
she got mad and um and like uh she had said some shit like, yeah, my, I'm going to have my brothers come up to school for your ass, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, shit, bitch, I'm from Grand Mac. You know what I'm saying? So I look out the, well, I'm with my homeboy. He, I look out the window. He said, yeah, they out there waiting on you. Listen that. <laughs> and these niggas looked at like bone, like a whole bunch of light-skinned ass bones, stuck as rugged bones. These niggas grown. They older than my brother. My brother four years older than me. But yeah. anyway, so I sn snuck out the back door. Next day, I came with the pistol. <laughs> Like, where your brother's at now? <laughs> got kicked out of there and shit. Ended up going to Folks. Okay. You know what I'm saying? At Folks, like, like, it was like a whole new beginning and shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But, like, once I got to know everybody and shit, you know what I'm saying? Niggas, and, you know, them bitches be helping the uh, teachers look at, um, with the uh, with all the folders and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they looking in there, they found out I got kicked out for a gun, so the rumor go around like you can carry a pistol. That nigga shoot your ass. <laughs> and then the niggas from the block that ain't come, going to school, they coming sneaking in school, sneaking into school, they like and, and everybody like look up to them and they like they coming up to me like, What's up, man? Isn't that yeah. cause my back then my brother and them had already had put been putting out tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like they was like hood celebrities and yeah, shit. Yeah. So so um when I get there. You know, everything was straight. I graduated and I went to SC. Okay. And you know, SC was right next door. Yeah, to I went to Southwest Nine Foot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So when I went to uh, SC, it was just like skip school. <laughs> like fuck it. <laughs> we said, said fuck it. <laughs> we're like we got this much freedom, we skipping school and shit. Man. We, was, we was outside smoking weed, yeah. uh, cigarettes, anything. <laughs> oh, this this what the cool kids do. Yeah. Not knowing that, like man, that shit, you look dumb as fuck. Like man. you're not going to class and shit. You look stupid. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? I failed the ninth grade and this and that. And then like I started like when. You know, um, the, the uh, idle mind is devil's playground. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not going to class and this and that, you getting. It. I got into a few fights and, and then you know it was a gang up. It was a few gangs up there. Yeah, you, you got know the project niggas on the street on the corner and yeah. shit. Man. Yeah, man. That ain't no projects, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking projects. <laughs> the fuck, man. You ever seen Warner Connors? Yeah. Brewster? Oh, yeah, for sure. Them, them yeah, projects, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Them was projects, for, for real, for real. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? King Homes. I remember back, oh, yeah, for but sure. back then, yeah. the King Homes was, I ain't gonna lie, like, I remember my, uh, my baby mama uh, sister moved down to King Homes in 92. That shit was nice. That shit was nice. I remember my mom about to move over there and shit. You feel me? You have, nice. a couple, you have a couple fights, whatever, and this yeah. and that. Working with his shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, uh, he be down there in the motherfuckers. I tell his ass all the time, I do not like you down there. Hell yeah, my brother, this fool was like, hey, can I see your car and go see this girl? I'm like, yeah, where she stay at? King Holmes. Oh, no, you good. <laughs> you gonna you, keep my shit there. Catch the bus there, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> your shit will be getting towed you back with go, no tires. You better go Uber, motherfucker. For real. <laughs> Hell yeah. What shit was, what shit? That ass. On, on some for real shit, like, I used to play uh, street sports. Yeah. But I never really. No organized shit. Yeah, because, um, you know, like, we had, even though we had, we had, our, our lights was never cut off and this yeah. and that, but the extracurricular shit, like, yeah. man, my mom's never yeah. couldn't afford it. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we, we didn't really do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, but like the only outlet that we had was music. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Hell so yeah. that's the reason why we got into rapping and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like on some for real shit on my father's side, man, that's all they do, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just, excuse me. Yeah. But that's all they do. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I got a lot of cousins that sing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's natural. Okay. It's natural. So we so, probably was the motherfuckers on, on the slave yard, <laughs> leading <laughs> lead the way hymns. to the war, yeah. <laughs> leading the hymns and shit, and that shit in our blood. <laughs> in our essence. <laughs> well, speaking of that shit, then when uh, when did the uh, music start hitting you? Like, all right, this is something that I can uh, see myself doing. Like, what, man, how old was you then? Man, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Like, real for real for real. Like, it's gonna amaze you. Like, first time I've been to. A recording studio was when I was seven years old, man. Oh, okay, damn. Seven years old. Uh, my brother, my brother, he was like uh, 11, mm. 11. You know what I'm saying? I might have the wrong age. Wait a minute, because he was, I think he was older than that. He's probably like 12, 13. Okay. He made this song, you know what I'm saying? And it was called Emotionally You. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was back in the, I need love. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool that shit, yeah. But he made Emotionally You, and I went to the studio with him and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when you fell for it? Yeah, man. I was in school. After that, I came to school. You know what I'm saying? I was rapping his raps and shit. Like, yeah, hell yeah. You feel me? Christina was a girl <laughs> playing hard to get. <laughs> Wasn't even my rap and shit. I, I was pulling bitches off of that shit. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, he can rap, girl? Hell yeah. He ate. That big T bitch yeah. came out. But, but look, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. 
that's when you first learn not to rap about shit that you do not got. got. Exactly. That's when I first learned. I, I rapped about a uh, water bed. I said, laying in my water bed while I'm watching. <laughs> I, it was some show. But I, this girl, it was this pretty ass girl. She was gone off of the way I was rapping. Then she going to say, you got a water bed. Man. And I just had to look at her and say, no. <laughs> That's how I mean, no. dog. You do no. anything for the chicks, man. So shit, man. Tell me some um tell me some rap names you came up with at first. I know it's some awful shit at first. Man, dog. um <laughs> What was my name? Uh D Smooth. <laughs> D Smooth. I ain't my I ain't got a D in my name. <laughs> D Smooth. And then I was uh MC Flex. Yeah, okay, okay. MC Flex. And then I had cause I was in a group, you know, so I used to make I used to always use acronyms and shit. Okay. And like so so we we was YGT and still for young young gangster trap, right? And my brother them teased the shit out. He's like, YGT, what y'all some yiggets? <laughs> y'all some yiggets? And he used to call us yiggets. They were like, here come the yiggets. <laughs> That shit was so funny. Hey, it's like me and my dog. We had to retire our name, dog. We came up with the Young City Boys, but I'm like, you see that shit was going City through boys. now. <laughs> City we, Boys. City hey, Boys. We was on MySpace, dog. We couldn't think of a name like City Boys, dog. <laughs> we, we young. Like so they, they really didn't fuck that shit up, cause like like when we used Hell to go yeah. out of town. When we used to go out of town, that's what the, it, everybody used to say. Like, that's them city boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they was talking about Detroit. You nah, know what I'm shit. saying? Terrible. Nah, it's terrible. Like, yeah. it's some old other bullshit. Hell yeah, man. Well, shit, well, uh, you said you was rapping your brother raps to the ladies. To the, uh, oh, the yeah. Ladies. When you start writing your own shit. When I start writing my own shit, like, like what, when did I start age? writing? Like, really, really, I started writing my own shit when I was like 10 years old. Okay. And then, like, my, but back to, because my brother and them were Jay Dilla. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They had a group. They had first a bad ex, and in fact, had had a problem and shit. And so, but anyway, um, I was I was all around all of them. You know what I'm saying? And my brother and them, it was this rapper and my brother and them group. Mm -hmm. It was like my big bro. He's like one of my big homies and shit. Yeah. Uh, named Lil D. Okay. He wasn't he wasn't that get good at writing. Okay. You know so. So like uh, my brother and them, he really got into the shit for my brother and them. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? They hood, and then I ended up. He used to come to me and start, ask me to write his rap. Yeah, yeah. And like my brother, he he was you know how big brothers is. <laughs> Man, he too young. He can't be in the group with this that little. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I'm like shit, but I'm like shit. Y'all about y'all being famous. Y'all doing shows with Ron DMC, X Clan, yeah. Ron Bass, DJ Easy Rock trying to sign y'all this and that. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing dudes off of TV. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they doing all this shit. And they doing. Shit. I'm talking like like big ass camera crews coming to the uh, block. And um, they doing St. Ives commercials and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they doing all this shit. So I'm trying to be a part of this. And like only way, my only way in was to write raps for the dudes. For my man's, yeah. Yeah. And then so, and so the, like, they used to they used to come to me, like, even the ones who knew K Crush, he knew how to write. I used to write, write stuff for him because he had asked me. He'd be like, write something for me. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Because he was trying to give me some money. Yeah. You feel me? So, so like I write stuff for him and everything, and then like they tell my brother later, like yeah, yeah he wrote, wrote that, that. Yeah, 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 he yeah. wrote that. Like I remember when they told when they first told him, like and he was mad, and I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is you mad? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like hey, that shit was cold, cause you didn't write that shit for yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, cause he was just saying it, cause he always kept saying that I couldn't rap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And they used to say yes, he can, you yeah. know. And then so like when it came down to it, he ended up he uh. Ended up saying that I could rap, and he he tried to say that he was being hard on me to make me <laughs> cold. Yeah, 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 but I don't believe that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. So shit. After, so after you writing for my man's and your brother finally get you that respect, you start fucking with. That yeah, crew? I started going over my cousin's house. My um, my cousin that uh, I told you used to uh, Arnita Walker mm. that used to uh, write for Motown. Okay. Yeah. Um, her brother. Her brother had a studio in his um house. My cousin, my big cousin Levon, man, that's one of my favorite cousins. Yeah. And like so. We used to go over his house, mm. and me and this dude, dude named uh, Ghetto Black, mm. Ghetto Black. Um, he used to be supposed to be my DJ, so <laughs> he didn't have no DJ equipment. <laughs> but every, but only thing he had was my ad libs yeah. when we was doing go, doing shit a cappella. Yeah. But like, like um, we we used to go over his house. Mm -hmm. He used, we used to go over his house um, and record and everything, you know. And with my uh, other cousin, uh, rest in peace, my dog, mm -hmm. Mike Anthony Walker. Okay. And he used to he used to uh, make all our beats and all that. It was crazy dude. He used to get blow, man. <laughs> I'm talking about. He's like, man, you know what? <laughs> I think you should uh, remix uh, R. Kelly. Yeah. 
He was like, man, instead of saying, I don't see nothing wrong with some bumper grind, <laughs> like, I don't see nothing wrong with a little blood and guts. <laughs> I was like, bro, <laughs> we, we're not Brother Lynch Hung. Man. For real, Brother Lynch Hung used to rap about killing babies and hey, no man. Brother Lynch Hung. No, I never heard of that. I gotta man. go look that up. <laughs> For real, I, I, I listened to that shit and I was surprised that we we used to listen to that. I was like, damn, that's why we some little nuts. Man, for real. Yeah. So shit, with that, you in the studio, you rapping and shit. When you start feeling like, nigga, I'm, I'm nice. Like, for real, I'm nice. Like, from the time that I first started off, off writing up, and everything, I yeah. was like, nah, but on, on some real shit, on some real shit, like, like I was very, I was insecure about my um, music a lot. Yeah. But, but like... When I started feeling like this uh, shit is when I changed from MC Flex to POG. Okay. And the way I changed from, uh, oh, my bad. You good. Yeah. And I used to hang with everybody on Dickerson and shit. So okay. we goes over there. And it was this one dude, uh, my, my homeboy, uh, Corey, they called him No Good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He he put out a couple of uh, CDs okay. back in the day. But but like uh, he was there and he used, to, he used to like the way that we rap. You know what I'm saying? But he felt like he was the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he at the party, he had, he there rapping. And like, it's like three houses down from where we hang at. And everybody come get me. And I'm like, damn, they come to get me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I got to rap this rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so like, I peeped, I peeped that he wasn't freestyling. Because I started freestyling first. Just yeah. rapping you can, on you the You can mic. tell when somebody write, uh, rapping some red shit. And I peeped that he wasn't freestyling. So I had, I, I, um, I uh, rapped this rap called... Yeah. Portrait of a gangster. Yeah. Portrait of a gangster. Okay. And then at the end of the rap, I say, because I'm the POG. Yeah. And everybody, when I said, because I'm the POG, everybody started saying, oh, <laughs> like he was, and Corey didn't want to rap no more. Oh, shit. Like, yeah, he I'm didn't want to rap no more. He want, But he was a real nigga. He said, man, I'm going to take y'all to the studio. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, y'all want to take y'all. So I'm like, cool, cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we, we was all cool and shit. And then and they, what, what was so amazing is like how how people remember stuff, and the next day they start calling me POG. Okay. So <laughs> shit, what 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 do POG mean? POG portrait of a gangster. Oh, oh, the name of that song. Rap. Yeah. Yeah. Was, portrait of a gangster. Okay. Yeah, it means portrait of a gangster. Because I was wondering, I'm, I'm like, I never asked you. I was like, what what the fuck? What's POG? Man, I'm talking about like people get uh, make so many different. Uh, uh, they they make the acronym to be out so many different things. Yeah. And my sister, she say prophet of God. Yeah. But the one that I like is my boy. Uh, you know, uh, TJ off the radio. Uh, TJ Trouble Man yeah, used to be yeah. on ninety eight. Yeah. He call it. He be like, uh, "What's up, pimp? Soft grass shit." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dog, I ain't even off grass shit. You gotta say great, man. Man, hell no. Nah. <laughs> so shit with that, then when you uh you rapping and stuff, you put out any like. Any projects, any music back yeah, then? Yeah, I put out I put out this um one CD called The Spit Hustle. You know what I'm saying? I like, seen that. Yeah, cause I was you know every time I know I'm about to interview somebody, even if I know him, I still kind of look through a little shit. Just exactly. Ask the Spit Hustle was like um that's the only solo project that I really put out. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of different things uh amongst um like I was on the Street Life soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I was on the uh, Rap Files soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I was on uh. What was the name of that damn movie? I was on a movie soundtrack. There's a lot of stuff that I did. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Speaking of, I'm watching um Eight Mile. Was you in the basement, dog? <laughs> was you in that bitch? Yeah, yeah. I, I swear to God, I was with I was in there. <laughs> I'm in that bitch with my girl. We watching the battle and shit. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I think that's my nigga POG yeah, right there. I look young as hell, dog. Uh, <laughs> I look young as hell on that bitch. Like, dog, call my, I meant to text you, dog. You like just about 75 pounds lighter. Dog, when you said that shit, <laughs> I just went right back and thought about that shit, man. How you, uh, are you just, just we went to up? We went to the auditions. We went to the auditions. They was at the Wire Frog. And mm -hmm. then, actually, actually, we were the ones that helped uh, um, my homeboy. Uh, he go by uh, Itchy Palms right now. Okay. People know him as A1 Mac. His name is Craig. Mm -hmm. He played. He played Paul the fruit, Fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to. I was trying to lead it in so you wouldn't laugh and shit. But he played Paul. He said every day and did like yeah, he fruitcake. Yeah, because we was at we were at uh, the Wire Frog like we because we was all I'm gonna tell you like on some real shit like I had a fucked up experience on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. where a family member had stole a lot of a lot of stuff from me. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And like I found myself like. To the point where I was just about to really harm this dude, and like my brother had to stop me. Yeah. So 
I had made a decision. I was like, man, I'm about to go full fledged with this rap shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really about to jump back into it. So I went back. Like, it was a studio. My uh, homeboy Craig Young, he ran Dynasty Society Records. Okay. He was working with Pharmacy Records. They uh, put out the MC Breed when okay. that all we do is clubbing. Yeah. So like, he had called me and he was just like, man, will not you? Won't y'all come come up there and work with Mo Beats? Cause Mo Beats, like, he knew how to make beats, but he didn't really know how to uh, work the equipment. Good. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is before I was even making beats, and like, they they like the way. I, they was liking me as an artist, so when we get when I get up there and shit, I, I we just started living in the studio. Yeah. So at that time we was all living in the studio, and my cousin Arnita Walker, okay, the one you know, yeah, it's all, yeah. she uh she came and she got me, and she was like they having auditions for this movie that uh they didn't even have a name for it at the time. Yeah. They said we uh for the Eminem movie. Yeah. So. I tell everybody in the studio, I'm like, come on, let's go on and go up to the studio. We all, I mean, we let's go up to the wire fraud. Okay. She said she gonna take us. She came and got us all. We go up to the wire fraud. Boom. So we up there, we everybody performing and this and that, well, you know. And they were they weren't really looking for rap groups. They were just looking for a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A certain look. And yeah. and like this white dude comes up to uh um uh, Craig, mm -hmm. and they said he said to him, he's like, man, he's like, I got a perfect role for you. Yeah. He was like, I got a perfect role for you. He was like, gave him his car, card and told him to call him the next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he going to tell the story that way, but yeah. I, I know exactly how it happened. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, and like next, next thing you know, he was, in, he was acting in the movie. I remember, <laughs> I remember when we found out that he was going to be a gay dude. <laughs> like, like, it was just so funny because like. Here you go, you got this hard dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's doing all these hard raps and all this shit. And then like uh Craig Young, Craig Young, the owner of Dynasty Side, we sitting in the middle of the studio. The big, we used to be called the round table, it was the big ass round table in there. We sitting at the round table and then he comes, he say, he's like, Let me see the script, Matt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Matt hand him the script. Yeah. And then so he looking over to the uh over the script, he just looked. And then Craig started laughing. He was like, he was like, man, he was like, dog, <laughs> you playing a gay dude? <laughs> and then I'm thinking, and then Craig started laughing. Yeah. Well, they both named Craig and shit, yeah, but yeah. Mac, I'm gonna say Mac for the other. But he's like, Mac, Mac started uh, laughing. Yeah. He just like, he's like, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> like my man, my man gay, but they ain't got me doing no gay shit. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's like, they ain't got me doing no gay shit. Man, and it, it was just so funny to us. You know what I'm saying? We used to. Uh, he actually got it too. It was he uh, ended up busting a bottle over a dude's head. Because On the same? No, 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 no. In real life. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, was, he was at the uh, Wild Woodies. I don't yeah. know if it's still called Wild Woodies. Okay. You know, on 14 and Gratiot, uh that that uh, place. Yeah. Um, he um he a dude was heckling him. Yeah. Paul the fruit cake. <laughs> oh yeah, he got like, all. And he was like, he's like, okay, it's funny, this and that. Ooh. All right, I'm trying to chill. Leave me alone. The dude kept going around the bar, fucking with him. He think he a whole ass man. You think yeah. you really be thinking these people really fruit fruit cakes, but they and hell they no. I be caught it. a case for it. That too. shit crazy. All the years I watched that movie, it was that time like a month ago. I'm like, I'm oh, fucking POG this bitch. Man, do you know how many people end up calling me like, <laughs> like I'm like they like how much money you get? I was like, look. <laughs> I do not have a speaking role. Hell yeah. I'm just an extra in the movie. They, pay, like. they paid us ten dollars an hour. Man, you feel me? But I ain't gonna lie. Them days, like, like them days used to be long as hell. We'd be in that bitch from six a.m. to motherfucking uh, eleven o'clock at night and shit. Hey, get you a nice little check, shit. Hell Fuck yeah. that, man. Bitch used to be fat. Man, so shit with the rapping shit. You know, you you said you had a lot of connections and shit. Was it ever to get signed or just like? Was ever to make it big? Or back just in like the day, back like in the day, we used to want to get signed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you start hearing the stories of how they play you, and it's and that. But like, but like, I just drifted on more. My cousin Arnita Walker. Mm -hmm. One day, I'm in like we used to live together, mm -hmm. together, <laughs> and I used to just be really. I just used to record. I ain't make beats or nothing. Yeah. I ain't make beats, but I I recorded my whole album. That Spit Hustle album. Yeah. I recorded and mixed it. And mastered it myself. You know, okay, it's the first yeah. time ever doing it. And like, that's what be tripping me out. Like, sometimes people come to me and be like, that's a hood classic. Yeah. Like, you should put that back out. Like, I got songs on there, like, uh, My Umbrella. Uh, the Spit Hustle, it's called Spit Hustle My Umbrella. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really talk about my life. Okay. You know what I'm saying? How long ago you put that out? Man, I put that I put that out in 2004. Shit, man. put that bitch back out. Yeah, <laughs> man. You know, you know they on that on that wavy shit right now. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? But like, it's a few songs that like hit home and hit to heart. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I might put out one day. 
Okay. Put put back out one day, but like a lot of people like it, like you know what I'm saying. Like people that I respect be surprising me some day, like, some days. Like Boudang, one time I'm on um, Facebook and he put it up and he was like, he's like, dude, this a hood classic. Yeah. But he also put up the Ultra Nine mixtape. That was like my first first pro- as just a producer. Yeah. Uh, the mixtape because I was I used to be with Ultra Nine Records. We was, yeah, and that's the funny thing I was just about I was just about to talk about that shit. I remember walking past that bitch because I stayed on Cooper. Yeah. So I remember uh, my homeboy stayed in the apartment building right next door to it. Yeah. And we had walked past that bitch every day going to go hoop at Cross Street to Crowley, uh, mm-hmm. his little park Cross Street. We you always hear young, music. You was a young dude. Yeah, yeah. I was oh, okay. thinking about I was probably about. 15. Oh, okay. We, 15, we, 16. We would have turned you into a man if you knocked on that door. <laughs> so then. There was some shit going down in there. Dog, cause we, every time we go past, like, dog, that bitch banging inside. Like, yeah. me and my homeboy Red, shout out to Red, dog. We, we was rapping together. We like, dog, we should. We should see how much we should try to start rapping. I'm yeah. glad we didn't, cause you were like, nigga, get your weak ass out of here. <laughs> no, no, I always give dudes encouragement. Like, yeah. like even it's no whack rappers. It's just yeah. people who don't know the articulates of it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So with that was the Ultra Now was you a part of a label? It was that your label? Was I was a part of a label? Like the, it, it had two CEOs. One of them was rap, and the other one was Nick Salaka. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He, don't you know the Nick's chips? Yeah. He uh, yeah, you, he put them out. Okay, yeah, he owned them. He that's that's his brand. Cause I know the one rap dude name was uh Young, Young Gator. Gator. Yeah. Young Gator. Shout out Young Gator. That's my little dog. Man. What was the name of that he song? He was your he had? age. Matter of fact, yeah. when he was rapping. What was, his, what was the uh, name of that song he had? It was on the radio. Bose uh, or we, he had a lot of songs. Cause he performed. It was one. I remember he performed at Summer Jam and it was free at the uh, at the Heart Plaza, right? Man, we did so much back then. Man. man, I'm talking about like, but like one of my favorite songs was a song that he put out about his mom. Like the dude. Was serious, you know what I'm saying? He was a young dude that was serious because he, he he lost both his parents when yeah. he was young. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He made a song about his mom, uh, like about his uh, about him really, and it's about him not having a mother or father. And then his mother, his mother best friend, she sung the hook. Oh, and, damn. and like actually, when we was uh, doing that song, like it was really emotional because she started crying. Yeah, she started crying when she was doing the hook. Yeah, and it was just crazy. Is he know? uh? So you still keep in touch? Is he? Yeah, yeah. He, I uh, I think. I think he working with Yellow Beezy. I ain't sure. Yeah. I ain't sure, but I know he brought Yellow Beezy up, and he was saying that he done met him and this and that, but, like, it's somebody down there that he working with. Uh, don't get me the line. You okay, know so, he's still, so he's still on the music shit then? Yeah, he's very active. He's very active. Up. His brother them uh, putting out, um, you, uh, they putting out a movie where they, I don't know if they released it yet mm-hmm. or not, but uh, don't you, you ever heard of The Umbrella? Yeah, 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 I did, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I see that shit on them. Facebook a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's them. Damn, yeah. So uh, you was heavy with it. You was came up in the era with like Rock Bottom, uh, motherfucking yeah. Street Lords, Blade, all that shit. Yeah. Like, how you feel about the rap scene then compared to the rap scene now? Actually, like, like I like the rap scene then and now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did songs with Big Hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I also did. Hold some- on, Big Hurt, dog. You said you got me because on the interview, uh, come through, man. <laughs> I hit the yeah. nigga up on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he a cool dude, man. And yeah. that's so crazy because we was talking about him last night in the studio because um, Joe Kane got songs with him also. You know, okay. so I introduced him to And so it's like me, him, and Cheddar Boy Malik. We was in the studio and uh, Malik, uh, uh, Joe was like, man, we need to put Herc on a song. And then, what's the name? Yelled out his number. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malik. Okay. He's like he had the same. I was like that sound like the same number that he been. He's like yeah he had the same number for twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> he like that. I was like hell no. You know, but I, I didn't did songs with Big Herc and I didn't did songs with uh, Cheddar Boy Malik. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so like that era, it was it was all good. You know what I'm saying? And like and I like it now because it's more because you seeing it. It was more for the love back then, but now. Yeah. But they was getting money. You was getting money, but you was mainly getting money off of shows. But now with the streaming and everything, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Now you getting money off your streaming and you getting money off your shows. And these little dudes, they out here getting to that money. They getting yeah, to that bag. Yeah, because when I had, because I was staying there uh, Harper Woods for a minute, but when I moved back to the city, the first person I got put on from everybody was Big Hurt. Like, yeah. them was nigga cold. Yeah. And then Malik, low key, like, I'm like, dog, Malik was cold as hell. Like, the Cheddar Boy yeah. sound. So I, I was rocking with all of them. Like, did you uh fuck with um Street Lords like with uh with Wine like, and Blade like, and uh, the Street Lords when um we was over on um at uh at the uh, studio with Dynasty Society Records. Mm. Now this was when they was all still cool because a wipeout wipeout he was from my hood too. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. off Linux. Cause his son rapping now, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wipeout was off Linux and everything. You know what I'm saying? And like I used to call uh wipeout Fat Tom. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And like. 
at the time, Wipeout, he was recording up there, you mm. know, because Mo Beats used to record other uh, artists, mm. and he used to bring he used to bring Blade up there. He was bringing Blade, and it was somebody else. I can't remember too much, but they used to all because that's when they was all cool, mm. and he used to. Uh, Bring um bring all of them up there. So I done met him. I ain't never did no work with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying? But I done met him before. Like when he was living. How you, you know feel like uh, to Blade how, you for sure. how you feel Blade would have uh been if he was still alive in this day Man, time? we like like I was on some you can make a, a hundred million scenarios, you yeah, know you what can, I'm saying? Yeah. And like like you know, like the dude would have been some. He was already somebody great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. But more importantly, he was a great to some, a great to his family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. It's just a tragedy what happened. Hell you know, yeah, it's man. as simple as that. It's, and, it's, and talking about that shit, man. Like uh, I was telling my uncle about that shit with the whole T Grizzly shit. Do you feel like when you from? I, I don't really even say just Detroit. Just when you from a city period, and you get big. He said one line that that hit home in this new song. Like they say, you real when you broke, but you fake when you rich. And like, no. and, and so I no, like, like what it is, what it is. Okay, every I'm gonna say it like this: like everybody had a moments of flexing, mm -hmm. but when you under that magnifying glass, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Like yeah. when you get under that magnifying glass, it is arrogance and like, oh yeah, so, for sure. And like people sit back and say, "Did you own some?" The same person did today. Today I could give you fifty dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'd be like. Man, that's my man. This nigga gave me fifty dollars of this and that. Then tomorrow you find out, like, oh, you know, a couple weeks back he hit, he hit the uh, lotto for a hundred million. Yeah. I'm a whole ass nigga then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this whole ass nigga only gave me fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? It's it's fucked up scenarios. You know what I'm saying? Like like no matter what I'm a, like no man no man don't loan out nothing that you uh, can't afford to lose. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm for saying? Sure. Yeah. So if you loan out your time, you loan out loan out some money or anything, man. If you can't afford to lose it, man, don't loan it out to nobody. You can't be mad at a man about anything. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Because you, you're a man. You got the same 24 as the rest of everybody oh, yeah. else. That's for you sure. You know what I'm saying? So I just look at it like this. Like like what what happened to his auntie is a, is a terrible tra tragedy. Yeah, fuck you know what I'm saying? Man. I don't know the situation. I don't know if it came for it. Was, it was for him. Or he said in the song that it was really for him. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just sitting back saying, like, you know, I don't know if somebody was robbing or trying to rob or uh, whatever, but that's just fucked up that dudes out here doing that. And you got to realize who you are and, and what situ and what city you in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, yeah. like, you can sit back and say, like, oh, man, they, every time every time a dude get on, this and that, this happened to him, but you you got Big Sean and you got Dave Low. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They out here getting money. You got Eminem. He out here getting money. Who, who done killed yeah. Somebody around them Cause they come and go Like you ain't You know A lot of times Like Boosie said in the interview I seen with Vlad Oh shit hold up yeah, we gotta get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you gonna get back to The interview with Vlad Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who found Oh that's That's the house phone That's yo. the house phone Yeah granddad upstairs and shit. Uh, <laughs> Keep the house yeah, phone I'm laughing, like, I ain't answering They looking at the caller ID Like <laughs> yeah, you answering yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. Bill collector Like <laughs> let that bitch ring Alright uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Yep. Alright, yeah, but we, with the Boosie shit with on Vlad, man, he was talking about like when you make it in your city, you the most hated, so you gotta get the fuck out of there really. And if you is there, it gotta be a quick, hey, I'm here for a minute, give away some shit, and get out. That's that's an answer to a scenario, but you know what I'm saying? But like I look at it like this, like, you know what I'm saying? God God's plan. It's mm -hmm. God's plan, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody everybody know the saying, like, shoot. If you tell God, God, God your plans, he going to laugh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's what, it's what God got planned for you. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And he get, he get some of the hardest struggles to some of the strongest people. Oh, yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to know. You got to have that faith and believe in what what's, what it is. Hell, yeah, man. And then, like I say, you, we was talking about the whole, like, do you like Detroit rap better back in the day to in comparison to now? Um, you remember um, um, fucking Short Dog? He's fuck with uh yes. yeah yeah he was cold as hell but that's just off the subject but my thing I think the new dudes now it's kind of a uh, it's a copycat shit to me right now dog like, you got some people that's straight mm -hmm. but it's like everybody I see is kind of like we just gonna mimic the the, the the next person and that's it well it, I'm gonna ask you a question what up what's new under the sun <laughs> <laughs> on some for real shit that's yeah. how it is like at the end of the day like I cause like. You know what I'm saying? I'm up there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I was a young dude. Like I like I said, I jumped in this shit young. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing a lot of I done seen like the Detroit rap scene start. You know what I'm saying? And so like 
you always had good rappers. Mm. It, it, like we just got to stop finding shit to separate us. That's true. You know that's what I'm saying? It ain't no back in the day. Ain't no. It's just Detroit rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Detroit hip hop, whatever you want to call it, is just us, yeah. and that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And like, and like, what a lot of people uh, look at, like everybody want to say, it's either East Side or West Side. Yeah. It's either uh, hip hop or it's uh, gangster rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And all that shit. No, man, we all one, man. You yeah, know what I'm sure. saying, and like, like it's a lot because it, it's dudes who do hip hop that I like. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's battle rappers that I like. It's uh dudes who who spit street rap. It, like one of the most charis- charismatic and um cold coldest punchliners is Sada Baby to me because he got the full package and he do a lot of he do a lot of things this this dope. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of artists out here like him too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. But some of them just be scared to be itself, be yeah. themselves. And like sometimes, like like I think. I think you know what else is like the social media messes up a lot of shit too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, like the difference, the difference from back in the day, and I was like the social media because it helps and it hurts. Because yeah. like, like people be so infatuated with their artists, with the artists that they uh, like, mm. that they sit back and they constantly watch them until it irritates. Them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, then they want to see them lose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Think about all these bitches was on Nicki's side. And then, exactly. then yeah. they see you know Cardi come out. Oh fuck Nikki yeah. and this and that in the room. <laughs> but all y'all bitches was on Kim's side too. And then Nikki and Kim got a problem. Oh fuck Kim. Yeah, yeah. You know yes what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like come on now, for real. Like you can you can like like two artists. Man, I like Pac like, and Biggie. Yeah. When when it was going on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Also for real shit like and that's like, like the whole Meat Mill shit, niggas. As soon as that Drake shit, oh fuck Meat. Then oh I love Meat. Like it's like oh what, what yeah, you gonna now do? Now they back cool. And yeah, now nah, yeah. Nah, now you a dick sucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put man. tap tap. That on your back, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, so with, uh, yeah, yeah, dog. So you, I know you talking about um, you saying Detroit has one. I know you liking the shit as far as like um, yeah. everybody collaborating now because I see you got PZ, you got Payroll, mm-hmm. you got Sala, you have uh, uh Vezo, all them. You yeah. know, what I'm saying go ahead and squash that beat. Just, that but what they got to do is um, is eliminate themselves from the street shit, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of a lot of dudes be sitting back letting they street ties stop them from uh, making money. From uh, affiliating themselves, or even doing a song with somebody that that like okay, it'd be I can step back and see situations where it's one dude, it's one dude that don't like this other dude, mm-hmm. and they ain't even rapping. These right. twos ain't dudes ain't even rap, but they cool with this rapper and, and this dude cool with this rapper. So these two rappers not fucking with each other, but this person ain't got no problem with either one of the rappers. Yeah. These people ain't got a problem with either one of the rappers. They just got a problem with who they affiliated with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and then you be looking like. Bro, like, like y'all niggas need to grow up and get this money. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bring that bag in. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to do songs together because for the simple fact that shit gonna make you grow as men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of course, it, I bet you it was some people that didn't like the fact that uh, PZ and motherfucking payroll Hell uh, yeah, you know. was together. I'm, I bet you it was close friends, niggas that that, that was on their squad yeah. sitting back talking about man, fuck that, like nigga, you a whole ass nigga fucking <laughs> with them East Side niggas, or you a whole ass nigga fucking with them West Side niggas. Yeah. No, nah, nigga, I'm fucking with payroll, nigga. He from Detroit, nigga. I'm exactly. fucking with Peasy. He from Detroit, dog. Hell we yeah. fucking with hell of a hell of a making these beats, and we know we should have got a beat from POG. <laughs> well, speaking of, we gonna talk about your shit, man, with the whole bad movement yeah. and you becoming a uh, producer, engineer, and shit making beats. When did that transition happen from the rapper to producer? Uh, the rapper to producer was when, when I, I, I'm gonna tell you about a situation like uh, I um. I made this song called Dying for Hip Hop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was just rap like on some for real shit. I was rapping about how I felt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was seeing like I was seeing dudes who was getting in the game and they was getting on and they ain't even know about like they didn't even know about the real situations with 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 hip hop. I'm like, I'm in this bitch. I just sat back and said, fuck this street shit, this and that, and I'm going hard for it. Yeah. And these dudes, it's a lot of dudes like just because they got, had a bag behind them, they was getting on. It was because in the two thousands, it was a lot of whack music. Hell yeah, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Hell yeah. mainstream, about, local, whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was a lot of whack music, and Search played it. I'm, oh yeah, MC Search. Yeah, MC yeah, Search. Yeah, yeah, he played yeah. it, and he was on the radio at the time. He, they played it on the radio, this and that. You know what I'm saying? And like, he actually had me going to the. Uh, meeting room and talked to the program director which was KJ Holiday at the time okay. he was working at Def Jam also so yeah. he was like an A&R from, for Def Jam you know and he I went in there and I talked to him and he said he was like I'll walk you in the Def Jam he's like I, I believe you got it I'll walk you in the Def Jam if you just bring me the, your full album yeah 
my full album was base base album was basically done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I just keep hitting this fucking oh, table. <laughs> but uh but like uh my album album was basically done. Mm. I had all the vocals and everything, but it was a situation where we had uh somebody at we had one of them old ass computers where the hard drive was outside and the dude it made it fall and we lost all our all our beats. Damn. So so I went to at the time like we wasn't doing no recording because we was on we was on some ghetto living yeah. in the studio because like your shit was fucked up like man it was grown men I ain't bullshitting like we were grown men and like like the record label was looking out for us and he got tired because yeah. these motherfuckers, like he don't even got no contracts on yeah, us yeah, yeah. but he looking out, looking out he yeah. looking out like yeah I want y'all to do this and it came a time where Universal was trying to get us. And he, he needed us to sign contracts and dudes wasn't signing. Yeah. And I was just like, y'all some dumb motherfuckers. But it was just like a whole bunch of business fucked up. So anyway, I went down to the studio and I, I told I told my producer at the time, which was Mo Beats, mm -hmm. what what my man said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I told him that like, yeah, my man said this. He was gonna um and when it came down to it, he said to me, he was like, Um, I'm working on my album right now, P. Yeah. And like I was like, look, bro. <laughs> Only thing you gotta do is just make the beats so over. I got copies of the songs. Yeah, that's it. And it's he said, I'm about to work on my album, P. Yeah. And he hold me. Yeah, damn. He hold me like really he hold himself because he hold all of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We done did all this struggling. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's like you saying fuck it. Yeah. And so so the situation was I had I had like I ain't gonna lie, I pulled off from his studio, pulled up to my house, and my homeboys were sitting outside yeah. waiting on me and like and I ain't gonna lie, like uh, this was before O Train Nine Records was even formed. Yeah. All the way, but like, um, rap, rap brother, his name Low. That's my dog. Mm. He, him, and um, my homeboy Prevail. He, um, he got uh, the studio uh, right now. Collector. Okay. They were sitting in front of my house, and they told me he was like, man, he was like, dude, uh, what's up, man? Uh, the label want to get, he was like, we, we about to form this label. My brother, they got, they was like, we got Nick and this and that. And they was like, they about to form the label. And they, they offered me 15000 one of his old school. It was an alcohol old school. And shit. I ain't bullshit. <laughs> yeah. He offered me 15000 in the old school. And he said, do an album. And I like, I told him, I was like, no, nah, y'all ain't got to give me that. Yeah. I was like, just give me some equipment. Yeah. Give me the equipment. I'm going to get it done. And y'all just pay. I need my videos paid for it, this and that. And we're going to split we gonna do a 50 50 split yeah he said all right yeah you know what i'm saying so they already had the studio studio equipment but i just didn't like the location because it was right above a club okay you know what i'm saying so if they throwing a party i can't record yeah you know exactly. so i was like yeah, let's just put this shit in in, in, in uh, my house put the shit in my house and then i made a booth all that shit yeah. and then i just started i had to produce yeah i had to produce so yeah. like i <laughs> I'm all in, so yeah. I had already started. Like I basically started like over there, and like that's what was so crazy. Like, like don't don't deny your people access to creativity. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, cause like I ain't gonna lie. Like to this day, I love my my guy Mo Beats, but he was doing a lot of stuff. To, you know what I'm saying? And like he was telling dudes like don't don't show him how to save on the NPC and yeah. this and that. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like, cause I made this one beat, and I guess he thought it was funny. The beat was funny, this and that. So, what's the name came over? And this one dude, uh, my boy Hostile. He used to. You ever heard of Hostile? He was with Iron Fist. Um, he battle rap and all that. He was with Proof. I think so. Proof. I think but so. At the time, he was with us. You know okay. what I'm saying? He was in the round table, and like he had came over. He wanted to record, and Mo Beats was on some lazy shit. Really didn't want to record and this and that, cause he living in the side of the hook. So. Yeah. Hostile was like, for real? Because he was on his way out the door. He come back, and yeah. I tell him the hook. We dropped the hook, and once his while is playing, like the other rappers that's in the round table coming in there like, damn, let me get on this bitch. This bitch hard. <laughs> Hell yeah. This bitch hard. Spotify, okay. Apple Music. So you just got forced into the whole producer role then, basically. Kind of like. Yeah, I always wanted to. I, I ain't going to lie. I love rapping. Yeah. You know what I'm Hell saying? Yeah. For real. It's just any, you know, like, that's what I knew. Yeah. You feel me? So. But like I just stepped into the production role, and then I started seeing that I could I could be more effective, like helping. Cause like I ain't gonna lie, like to this day, like I I write I write hooks for people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I help them with their uh, cadence, 
and they arrangement on the uh, verses. Yeah, yeah. And I'll make a beat. You know what I'm saying? I just did it the other night. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, and, and like being a producer, I found out being a producer is more fun seeing, see, creating the music is than just rapping. Hell yeah. And that, that's funny because that coincides with the coaching shit. I love hooping, but I love seeing that I help somebody get better. Exactly. Like, damn, she, exactly. I got a girl who didn't know I do a layup. Now she can finish, do mm -hmm. this, left, right. So yeah, it do, that do make sense, man. But I still don't like teaching people how to use the equipment. Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, like, yeah. I tell them. <laughs> like, if they say, how you do this? And I just show it, this and that, and you on your own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have the love for it. Hell you yeah. Feel me? So with the, uh, with the bag movement, when did that start? The bag movement, I came up with that because uh, it was... It was like basically, really, I wanted to start a, a nonprofit and it was going to be called Beyond Artistic Growth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And okay. it was just going to be like on some, because like even the name shows the transition from streets to to being a productive person in your community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was just going to try to start a nonprofit. And then I find out all the shit you got to do. They do background checks and yeah. all that shit and make sure you want honey. I was just like, man, you know what? This is just going to be my label. Yeah. Be, uh, the Beyond Artistic Growth Movement, the bag movement. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, so, like, that's what I really was starting with. You know what I'm saying? Like, and my, um, I was working on, you know, Wiz and uh, Moochie. No, hold on. Wiz, that's, he made beats, right? No, Wiz. No, it's, it's a dude I be talking to named Quincy. Rap. Quincy. Yeah, it called Wiz. Oh, oh, Silly oh, yeah, yeah, Silly V. Is that your that's your family? Yeah, he basically my family, bro. Yeah, like, one time did, I was recording, I posted, he's like, hold on, is that a POG uh, crib? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Silly V, like, like I knew him since he was young, very yeah. young. And, like, he used to come over, my, I mean, like I said, my cousin Levon had the studio. He used okay. to come over there. He, uh, he was best friends with my cousin. Yeah. And listen, I don't know if he was hitting her or what. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> y'all became cool. Yeah, yeah but, but we became good. Uh, he was always very interested in in the music and the production. So I used to always like he asked me something. I I teach him, and then like like on some for real shit. He's so talented. Like he know more about the computer shit. Yeah. Like I be calling him. Like you got this program? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like he real talented with beats and everything. He was on the um. On the book the other day making beats and stuff. Yeah, so you say Wiz and uh, what's his name? Wiz and Moochie. Okay, like, yeah, I know Moochie. Yeah, this is my homeboy. Yeah. You don't know Wiz, man. I know. I, I, he from I, the block. I know now. Yeah, yeah, I know now. I had to think the about street but, digger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he is. Cause that, like, that's when I um I knew about you. I didn't know the excluded. We yeah, didn't even yeah, talk yeah. about the Balfour boys. The boy, the Balfour boys. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 um, Choo Choo was rapping. <laughs> Your brother Choo Choo was rapping. I know. Rapping. Cause it's funny. Every though we gotta get Choo on the uh, podcast. Cause every fucking time. Choo Choo spill. Joker boy cheesy. Adonis uh, DeLuise uh, Kruger Duh, Y'all had my fucking squad man, man I'm talking about uh, B Yeah You got B man, uh, Cause on the last On the last one we did with Cheese He was like Yeah I had homegirl Kept saying Oh Joe Kane Don't, don't forget Joe Kane Yeah man. yeah Cause uh, Cheese was like I had homegirl Who was saying like Yeah you need to mess with uh, POG Like tell that nigga Hit me up Oh he talked like, <laughs> Oh I know I'm down here and shit Yeah like Like on some for real shit Like <laughs> Like His homegirl His homegirl was actually uh, my chick at the time. Yeah, my chick at the time. Like it's so crazy because she was a friend of the family and she grew up like around my family. You okay. know what I'm saying? And like her and my cousins, mm -hmm. cousin, uh, Sabrina and Shro, they used to call her they little sister. Yeah. So everybody was like, they was like, so when I come around and I'm their cousin, yeah. And I was messing with Chrissy. <laughs> yeah, they look at it. They, yeah. Everybody, everybody was looking at that shit. Like, like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, damn, this nigga fucking his own people. Like, hell no, she ain't no kid to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, yeah. but for real, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. That's that, that's my home. To this day, we still friends, man. I love her, man. That's my home girl, man. Like, on so on so for real shit. Like, she was out. She was really out there selling CDs with me, dog. We yeah. made a lot of money. I remember one time. Up. I remember one time we uh, when the Pistons won. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had this truck. You know what I'm saying? On 24s and around 24s, right here, <laughs> and a motherfucking big ass uh, speakers and that shit. We goes down to, uh, downtown. Yeah. Man, we selling CDs about that bitch, man. We had a box of CDs. We sold all them bitches. We was asking for ten dollars. Motherfuckers were so happy that the Pistons won. They give me <laughs> twenty, twenty five, yeah. thirty. Man, we came home with a bankroll. Man, yeah, everybody was happy about that shit besides me. Yeah, that was my baby. Cheese went with us too. Yeah. Cheese and Osage and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Osage, another producer. Yeah. So yeah. them bad for days, y'all recording, man. How was that shit, man? Man, that shit was something special. I ain't gonna lie. Like, like everybody really needs to go check out that 
that spit hustle and the bail for boys, you know what I'm saying? Like the bail for boys was really I ain't really do no I ain't do no production on that. I don't He's think. Rapping, yeah. Now, yeah, cause it was around the time Fifty Cent just came out and he was rapping off everybody beats. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So the mixtape thing was really big, and mm. so that's when they that's what they were doing. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying. I, and at the time they couldn't afford my beats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they was junk. I ain't gonna lie, they were still in high school Hell too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's so crazy about it. They were still in high school, man. Hell and yeah. you know what I'm saying. Don't get me wrong, they was getting money, but they was just still in high school they yeah. they didn't want to pay for the beats yeah, yeah. let me say it like that <laughs> yeah. you feel me they was like why, why are we gonna do that we get freebies but uh, if you listen to that spit hustle that that really got the essence of uh, a bow for in it you know what I'm saying like it's, it's also Gray and Mac you know what I'm saying that's where I'm from but at the time I was living on bow for and that's where we recorded it yeah. cause Almost everybody who lived in that house, like my cousin, you know what I'm saying? My cousin, she asked me to come live over there with her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I just ended up putting the studio over there, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And she loved the fact that I was paying all the bills. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Off yeah. the studio. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, uh, almost everybody that lived in there had something to do with music. Man. Yeah. So like, like I, I remember one day just waking up in my drawers. Jumping out the bed, going down, jumping in the booth, saying, "Hey, uh, my boy, no size, making the beat." Yeah. And I just, I'm in the in the booth in my drawers rapping <laughs> and shit. But like, it was, it was like, it was like that. That's what was going on. We had uh, Coco, uh, Robin Holloway. We call her Coco. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She on some hooks. My boy Sean Wine. He used to be coming over there cutting everybody hair, but yeah. he also rap and sing. He used to hate. And I, I back in the day, I used to always tell him like, "You could do both." He was yeah. like, "Man, ain't nobody gonna listen to nobody yeah, who rap and sing." Yeah. Look at this shit. That was back in. 2004 2003 it had to be 2003 or two yeah because i made it was i it took me like it took a minute before i put that out yeah. but anyway um my cousin she coming down there i'm doing songs for her she doing hooks the dudes across the street everybody on the block rapping that's yeah. what's so crazy it's like yeah, Balfour, yeah. like is it like b that studio being there had everybody become rappers and like they had something to do and and a purpose Hell you yeah. know what i'm saying b stayed across right across the street from hey, me I'm he used to come knock yeah. i'm talking about like this nigga b I ain't gonna lie, he was a young look, irritating nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'd be down there, bitch, making a beat, like, just like this, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then come, he'll come down, like, knock on the window. Yeah. He knocking on the window and shit. And I, I gotta stop making a beat to open the door for him. And then he, like, let me buy that beat, dog. <laughs> Let me buy that beat, dog, for real. I remember it was this one um, uh, song, uh, Stand Still. Mm. He loved that beat. He tried his best to buy that beat from me. He's yeah. like, you ain't going to do nothing with it. I'm like, yes, I, I'm listening to it. I'm like, man, that bitch going to be on my album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, And like, you got you, on the, um, on some skits, I got, uh, I got Spill and, and uh, Rail. Mm. People be asking me, what movie did you take that from? I'm like, no, nah, that ain't no movie. I had them go in the booth and act like they was whooping somebody ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got Chrissy. She, um. She on there, like she on the skit too. That's 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 right before the spit hustle. My umbrella come on. Mm -hmm. I got my sister on there singing in the background and like like she was just coming over chilling. They was just chilling for my birthday mm -hmm. and like and like she was like the, I remember the booth. No, that wasn't my birthday, but but anyway, uh, the booth didn't even have a window in it yet, yeah. so I wasn't hadn't been recording. And she was like, let me go in here and sing and this and that. So I just was bullshit, yeah. and then the acoustics on it sounded sounded so good. I still put it in the background of the yeah. skit, and everybody was like, "What? The, I know that movie." I'm like, "Oh, it's good. Tell me what movie it came from." Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man. But like, yeah, I need to go stream the Spit Hustle. Hell yeah, for real. Go, go ahead, spit, stream the uh, Spit Hustle. Okay, and um, one thing I wanted to ask because I see that you just had a video with uh with Joe Kane and um uh, and uh, Malik. Yeah. Uh, that's I, for that's for their project. They, so they, got, a, they, they got, got a joint album. Yeah, they got a joint album coming out. Man, they working on it. You know what I'm so saying? So it seemed like you real tight with them, man. How that uh, how that relationship uh, start? With um, those two? started on Bell for you know what I'm saying. Like I already knew Malik. Like I said, we uh, no, I didn't tell you. Me and Malik was on the uh, same label. He was also on Dynasty Society okay. at one time. That was before he was a Cheddar Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and um, like I was actually with Malik when he. He already knew uh, Fat Tone. I mean, Wipeout. Yeah. He already knew Wipeout before uh, before he was even the Cheddar Boy. But we was over at the uh, studio. We walked over to the store and he and he seen Wipeout and found out he was doing about to do a group and this and that. And we took him across the street. Okay. And they and he was with Wipeout after that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, but like, but like I've been new Malik. 
Joe Kane, I, uh, I actually met him from coming to the block. Yeah, I think, you know what I'm saying? Choo Choo brought him. Yeah, yeah, they went to school together. Yeah, they went to school together. And when they brought, first brought him through, I'm like, who the fuck is this white boy <laughs> y'all bringing through? You know what I'm saying? But Joe Kane turned out to be real. Like, I don't give a fuck where he from Harbor Woods. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The Harbor Woods, Gross Point area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this dude hung in, he been hanging in the hood since I knew him. <laughs> and that was back like 2003, 2004. Yeah, so, so he official. Yeah, so he official now. Nah, for yeah. real, he didn't lived in the hood with uh, him and Joe uh, Joe Bonanno. They used to do songs. They didn't lived in the hood over yeah. on Drexel and Frankfurt, and that's a tough hood by right by East Warren. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like so, the dude, the fish, he just uh, all around good dude, regardless of anything. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? So, so like me and him, we had been clicked. We had been clicked. Yeah. But like he got a real good following in Lansing. Yeah, that's you know what they achieved somehow. They yeah, Lansing's a good spot to go ahead and build. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I told him to build on that. Like, like I'm like right now I'm doing management for him. You okay. know what I'm saying? And like me and Malik, we was in the talks last night. He trying to get me to do some management for him too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So That's what's so up, like, man. So when uh shit, I might have to get both of them on, but shit, when uh when they project coming out, when they talking about um, it. So and then like and like it's just about them getting in the studio with me, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause I I'm also working on um a few other projects like my son. I was say yeah, go ahead shout your uh, your people's or your kids and all them. Um, my son, my son, uh, wife Lee, he got a project coming out. You know what I'm saying? He working and he got a joint project with Stu, Stewie Bandos. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then um I'm working with uh Baby D. Mm. Like right now he uh he in Niles right now. Okay. But uh but he from Detroit. Okay. And then I'm work also working on this one like supposed to be kinda quiet, but yeah. it's like it's like a the next Justin Bieber. Yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah, <laughs> That's like, what's up, he, shit. He he going by his name Steven. You know what I'm saying? He want to go by Drippy Steve, but it's by his management. If they gonna let him go by Drippy Steve or, yeah. or not, you know what I'm saying? This dude very talented. He little, he, I ain't gonna lie, he little white guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't gonna lie, he from, he actually from Six Mile though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like, what's up. And what's so crazy is that he stay in, he stay down the street from me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He stay down the street from me, and you would never know. Yeah. You ne you would, I like I never knew that they him and his sister sing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so you start messing with them. Yeah. Until uh, uh, I got a friend. We got a mutual friend. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like he he uh plugged out here. You ever heard of Onion? No, I never. Like like he he was the first dude like bringing Yo Gotti down here. Okay, and, okay, okay. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? He worked with a lot of dudes. You know what I'm saying? He used to work with Jeezy. He didn't work with man some of everybody. Like yeah. he. He working with he work with uh Filthy America right now. Don't okay, you know the clothing yeah, yeah. line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He working with Matasha. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what's so up. You like you got some shit going on. Yeah, the he, works, also, man. he also managed Jay Will. Okay. Did you know Jay Will used to be uh stay on Bell for? No. Nah. That's what that's what everybody told me. Hell no. And yeah. I talked to him about it. He said, yeah, I used to be on Balfour. Balfour yeah. was a shit, though, man. That was a nice little hair, uh, hood to be up in, man. I used to go yeah. over there all the time, chilling, kicking it. You know what's so crazy about Balfour? Is that that used to be my getaway spot? Yeah. Like, like on some for real, cause like my hood was just like full of drugs and and shootings. That's Detroit now. Yeah. But but like when I was growing up, it was it was like Balfour was the nice neighborhood. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't and, that bad. Yep. And we yeah. used to we used to go over there to just get out of trouble. Like I mean, like I remember when I got shot. I came over there and like that's when I was recording. I was coming over there recording a lot and shit. You know what I'm saying? And like that was my get, and I, I was like, damn, I, I, I need some place to get away from bail for. Yeah, <laughs> you said, wait, shit, with getting shot and everything you've been through, was there ever a moment that you wanted to just say fuck the whole rap music Hell shit? Hell no, it's, it's it. never. Yeah, I always loved it. It's in my blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, don't, like if you doing it just for money yeah. and you don't have no love for it, yeah. Fuck it, you would say fuck it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It'll get too frustrating for it for you. But like, but like. You don't have to be a millionaire to make money off of it. Like I've been making money off of rap, like yeah. for a very long. I've been paid, paid for verses, performances, yeah. uh, beats, yeah. the beats, uh, any type of production. I could sit back and record. I could re sit back and push buttons, record till I'm motherfucking seventy five. Hell yeah, you know what shit. I'm saying? I ain't getting a couple dollars myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So shit. I done, I done put one of my sons through school. I'm take care of all my other kids. I done bought houses and cars off of that shit. Shit. That's what's up, man. You know shit. what I'm saying? Like shit. I, I, in my eyes, I'm a success. Hell yeah, shit for real. <laughs> you feel me? Well, shit, I got uh, speaking of studio shit, man. 
I seen that you had posted something a couple uh, a couple of weeks ago, man. What was that? Uh, about niggas not being prepared in the studio. Oh, that so, irritates the studio shit. Studio like etiquette, man. How should a motherfucker come prepared? Because I, me coming to your studio, one thing I can say about your studio compared to other places I've been to, you, when you know you got somebody coming, you don't have a thousand niggas in the crib. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a plus because sometimes I've been to the studio like, God damn, everybody in the auntie in this bitch. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. How, how do you want an artist to come in and be... Look, I'm going to do my best to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like when you show up to the studio, be prepared. Have some type of idea of the song. If you're not the best freestyler, you know what I'm saying? Don't come here talking about you about the freestyle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, like what uh, I know what post you're talking about. This person came and he had, they, they didn't have no idea of what they... They just had a beat. Oh, man. And these motherfuckers could not freestyle or nothing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then at the end, this is what else pissed me off because like, like on some real shit, like I wasn't even supposed to be fucking with these because like my my old my one of my homeboys, one of a good friend of mine introduced these dudes to me and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These dudes usually I I don't never expect nobody to uh like with this music shit a nigga try to play me and they say I'm a big dude. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? And like <laughs> and like my reputation speaks for itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Like I'm not about to be buying no bullshit. Yeah. So like the dudes came over and they um they was recording and like I ain't gonna lie, I put that post up while they was in the booth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they was cause these motherfuckers, like he like come in the booth with me. They sitting down, they saying, and these punk motherfuckers, man, <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie, man. At the end of the what's the name, he gonna ask me, do I got cash out? I guess he expected me not to. Yeah. I said, Hell yeah. Yeah. You feel me? He's like, Oh my cat, my phone fucking up and this and that and all that. So I just like he get uh, the dude introduce. That's like if you introduce somebody to me, I'm yeah. gonna be like, oh he one hundred. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's only a couple of dollars anyway. Yeah. You know. So the dude say, man, okay, shit, man. I'm like, you can't go to the ATM and this and that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, I ain't got no bank account. I just got the cash out card. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, man, y'all can go ahead and go. I ain't tripping off of this shit. He's yeah. like, I got you tomorrow. Next day, the motherfucker didn't even pay me. Man, you know what I'm saying, and I ain't gonna lie, man. I want like if I see old boy, I might just slap the shit out of him, even <laughs> if he got my money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and I said it to you, motherfucker. Yeah. Which camera? <laughs> I said it, motherfucker. You know man. what I'm saying. Yeah. Ask about me, nigga. Yeah, because because <laughs> a lot of times that's why I be trying to um. No, whenever I want to go to the studio and record some music, I want I want to make sure the shit is straight, so I'm not wasting my time, your mm. time. You know what yeah. I'm saying. I want to be in that bitch and. Get it in, get out. You feel me? Yeah, exactly. That's how it's supposed to be. So, going off of that, man, tell me a time that you were surprised about about somebody coming in. Like, damn, this nigga got his shit together. Dope, fast, quick. You know what's so crazy? I'm going to tell you. Petey Pablo. Okay, damn, yeah. Petey Pablo. Uh, Malik brought Petey Pablo um, to Ultra 9 Records. Petey Pablo. Yeah. Because Petey Pablo uh, came in there. This one was so crazy. Like... Like he was, he was with, he was on some serious shit. Like Malik brought uh, Petey Pablo through one night. Mm -hmm. They all left the club and shit. Yeah. You know, it was him, Petey Pablo, and these dudes. I forgot where they was from, and I forgot their name, so I'm sorry. Yeah. But but <laughs> they came, they came through the studio and shit. This Malik called me like, man, he, this how he like, hey bro, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm on my way, I'm on my way to the studio, man, with uh, Petey Pablo. Yeah. I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you ain't got no damn Petey Pablo and shit. So yeah. he like, he like, and they see, I know they pull up like, like about 20, 30 minutes later. Mm. This nigga leaky leak. So they wouldn't be scared. This nigga so silly and animated. They done blocked off both ends of Canfield and shit. Yeah. <laughs> they done blocked off both ends of Canfield. Leaky Leak jump out with a pistol and shit. They all come in the West and You know what I'm saying? So Petey Pablo come in there. And then there's this one dude. Uh, he walking. Because like when you came in the studio, yeah. it's like it's like a lounge area. It had couches, a pool table, TV, this and that. He come in there. Then you got the uh, recording um, part. Yeah. And so you walk in and then like there's a bathroom in there. And the dude walk in the bathroom, he look around the bathroom, he go yeah. in the booth, open the booth up and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He opening doors. I'm looking like, man, get this nigga the fuck up out of here. <laughs> and then so he he give uh, Petey Pablo a head nod. He was like, he was like, uh, because that's what Petey Pablo say. Where the bathroom at? Where the bathroom? He kept saying that. Mm -hmm. Like, make it, I guess they was trying to make sure there wasn't nobody else in there. Like, they weren't going to get robbed. They yeah. in Detroit. Yeah, and yeah. then so... 
So he's like, tell Dynamite he can come on in. Yeah. I guess Dynamite was the shooter. Like, yeah. she was like, <laughs> oh, if we don't come out, you come in here and get us. Yeah. You feel me? So, but anyway, we got the recording. And Petey Pablo listened to that song like two, I mean, listened to the uh, the idea of the song and listened to the beat like two times. When in that bitch had a verse. Damn. No, I ain't gonna lie. That man walked in there and started spitting. Yeah. And like, you could tell it was Brent. Brand new, cause it had he was saying their names in the song, and it went yeah. right to the song, all that shit. Man, and like I was just like, damn, I was like, this boy <laughs> cold. I had a different respect for him. Then I used to like, I ain't gonna lie, I kind of was like clowning yeah, Petey Pablo. Yeah, like, yeah. like, I never looked at him as being talented like that. But that man, after that, I had a different uh, respect for him. Yeah. Even after uh, Drumline, and he did that <laughs> performance on Drumline oh, yeah, <laughs> with the meat coat on in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> you performing with a meat coat on nah. in, in Atlanta. In the, only, the only time I've been in the studio with uh, somebody who was known was uh, Benny Siegel. Like, oh, for real? It took a while, but I mean, he going off the cuff and shit, and him and his homeboy kind of like going he, back and forth. Oh, so he was going off the dome? Yeah. Look. It was for Buns I, and shit, for Buns. Buns. Oh, okay, I expect that. <laughs> so uh, Buns, I guess he was making like this compilation album and shit. He supposed to have like plies on it. I remember him talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. Jada. Rest in peace, Buns. That yeah. was my baby. Yeah, man. For real, good the dude. The first dude to really like, kind of like, uh, work with me and take his time and tell me how to do shit, man. Cause I was just he was a good dude. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, like like the dude on so for real. Like I met Buns. I'm like calling this dude. Like you're not gonna come get your keyboard. Yeah. He like, no nah, man, go ahead, keep making beats off of it. Yeah. That bitch was hard too. Like <laughs> it was it was the uh, Triton with the tube in it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That bitch was hard, man. Like. Man, another another Detroit uh, tragedy. Yeah, man, you know I think if Very he would been around, man, he definitely would have. Boy, that boy make a beat. I seen him firsthand beating goddamn 10, 15 minutes, dog. Yeah. Like for real, off a hook. What's the hook? Tell him the hook. Bam. Did he beat. ever tell you that uh, he supposed that Neil supposed to be his cousin? No, I remember you tell me that shit when he was in the yeah, street. He's like, I don't know if he was bullshit or what. But I looked at his ass like, wait a minute, you look like you could be Neil. <laughs> You look he like a, a big fast deal. Deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that nigga was one of the silliest niggas. I was just looking at some shit we got on YouTube, dog. That nigga, <laughs> we was all rapping this shit, dog. Oh, I see you put it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I seen it. And I'm rapping. I choked him off. Yeah, choking off the dick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that nigga was playing oh, him, dog. Come back, this thing. nigga. Uh, the one story I tell all the time, dog. This nigga hood, Howard Stern, Q and shit, dog. We in this bitch. We go to the studio on 15, like mom, and nigga. Mm. A legit studio I think Def Jam Used to do shit out there Or something dog yeah. Like it was cold My first real studio So um We go ahead It's like 2 1, 2 in the morning My girl at the time Mad I'm like man I'm trying to get this money Trying to record For free Fuck yeah. that So we go to the store And shit Get this, get pizza We get 1800 Moscato and shit dog We fucking the whole night up This nigga Q Eating this raw ass pizza dog This bitch oh. <laughs> This big nigga This nigga smash that shit well, it's cold It's a cold pizza <laughs> Nigga the, the, the cheese wasn't done Motherfucking sausage wasn't done <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, man, I was just Buns was a he's good. He's gonna dude. take that right now because he's at work. Yeah, yeah. Buns was a good dude, dog. Like he was a good dude, baby. And he did, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's fucked up that he had to pass. Matter of fact, his brother right now making music. Uh, named G Five. Mm -hmm. That nigga, uh, he straight, he sing. He uh, you talking about Gary? Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. yep. Shout out. I didn't, I didn't work with him before. Yeah, that nigga said he gonna come to the, to the pod. I'm still waiting, cause what up? Nigga shit, <laughs> niggas be talking good. It's all good. Yeah. But yeah, Pog came through instantly on his ass. Oh yeah. For sure, man. For real, that's my guy. I, I take friendships uh, very seriously. Yeah, yeah. Buns was good people, man. Shit, R.I.P. the Buns, dog. Mm -hmm. But shit, you said, speaking of uh, P. Pablo, as far as like surprising you, without naming names, what's your worst encounter with somebody in the studio? Um, my worst encounter? Like, like, yeah, just like... Man, I had a lot of bad experiences, <laughs> bro. I ain't gonna lie to recorded so many people, man. I done had some funny experiences, some yeah. bad, you know what I'm saying? I can't even think of one like, <laughs> like maybe the other night, you know, yeah. the one I put on Facebook, that bitch irritated me so bad. Man, like, I was rolling like, too. Like, this was, I ain't gonna lie, they was whack, man. Like, <laughs> I'm so for real shit, like, like sometimes, I, but I never tell a dude to give it up, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, because at one point somebody, like I said, my brother thought I was whack, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I kept, I kept going with it and I kept doing shit, you know what I'm saying? It made yeah. me feel... Feel like I, I got good, you yeah. know? Yeah, cause one thing I like about you when I be with your, when we record your shit is that you would be like, cuz, ain't no feeling that motherfucking verse. Exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. Nigga, I ain't feeling it. Cause I, I wanna feel the music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't feel the music, like, I could sit back be a whole ass engineer all day and be <laughs> Take like, Take that money. Like, <laughs> like, that's what, you, oh, you don't wanna listen to me? Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. You feel me? Like, I'm gonna give my opinion, you know what I'm saying? But that's what, that's what artists need to realize is like, uh, 
engineers hear people all day. Like, ain't nobody trying to change your song. Yeah. Ain't nobody trying to write your song for you or tell you tell you how to arrange your song. But like, yeah, and still, like, they know what you, after they see what you're trying to do, they're gonna do their best to try to help you do what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, a lot of people get mad and don't want to listen. Like, shit. Like, I remember, I remember it was an artist like that everybody liked to this day. You know what I'm saying? But he, like. He, he an artist that be around some of the artists that's on right now, but, like, he not as own as them, but I yeah. know why. Because for the simple fact, like, one time I was in the studio with him, and he was just rapping that old lazy rap shit, and I was just like, oh, bro, I'm like, shit, man, you was just talking with energy over here. I'm like, okay, you got that style, but, like, <laughs> yeah. do it with energy. Like, like you could rap, la like, some niggas rap lazy, but they do it with energy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like uh, fucking, um, um, what's his name? Damn, Spitter. Uh... Fuck. Skiller, uh, Skiller, um, like, like I'm contradicting myself saying you lazy and you in, with energy, yeah. okay? With expression, yeah. Let's say with expression, you gotta express yourself, like, like so that a, a dude can feel mm. where you coming from. You know what I'm saying? If you're not expressing yourself, motherfuckers just gonna be looking at you like, okay, that shit. I'm getting tired of it because there's a few rappers that be and then like you be like, okay, the first time it was all right. I thought you was just doing that on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro, you can't do this for like a hundred songs, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because motherfuckers get tired of that shit. You get irritated. Hell yeah, for you real, man. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, but like if you do your thing, if it's working with you, but I, but I bet you you notice how the people. Your uh fan, your fan base is declining. Yeah, hell yeah. But shit, wait, I got two questions then. As far as like, uh, you since you do both production and you do rapping, uh, I ain't say I rap no more. You you still where well, you rap, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> What's, who, I said I write and produce. Okay, well, who who's who two dudes producing. who uh is, inspire you as far as on the rapping side and on the producing side? Um, Tupac Shakur and Dr. Dre. Okay. Okay. Simple as that. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Like I'm from that era. Like like Dr. Dre. He, he like it's a lot of people that that amaze me in some of the things they do. But but like because uh, Dr. Dre is not just a beat maker. He's he's an engineer. And he listened to that. What's so he was gonna make sure that kick is that kick and that snare is perfect. You perfect know what I'm saying? Real. And like like Tupac Shakur because he he wasn't just a rapper. He he had a message within his shit. Like like what. What him and Biggie went through, of course, he was gangster about it. He he brought gangsterism and a revolutionary uh, rapping together. Like it was like Chuck D. If Chuck D. was in N.W.A., yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, That's right. so crazy. Like how he did it. You know what I'm saying. But he still had love for the the art itself. Like you could see that he had love for the art itself. And until like motherfuckers just sat back and said, "Fuck him." Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Like like he was he was into preserving like the the boom clap uh, production. You know what I'm saying. He was working with uh, Mob, yeah. Easy Mob, and all of that. Like and that was and, and like you know some of them songs used to be. So sweet, like that. Uh, what was that one? Uh, yeah, baby, if you're lonely, oh, yeah. you know, like easy mo B. He was like, Mo, yo, mo B, man. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of productions, like, and and what else? Who else did something like, like, as far as a producer, mm. they changed, changed the sound and stuff, like, was like, and a lot of people don't like his production, but it, it went very far. He was smart about what he did, and he was from Staten Island, yeah. Your boy Rizzo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel me? And that's so crazy. That because that's like somebody coming from um, like uh, uh, what what's a uh, city in, in Michigan that don't you don't know no about nobody? Uh, uh, it's a lot of rappers in Saginaw too. Yeah, okay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I because I don't want to bring no diss to nobody or nobody feel offended. But I'm just saying like it's a it's like a it's like a diamond in a rough. It was yeah. a diamond in a rough. Like nobody really knew that people was on Staten Island rapping until. Yeah. The Wu Tang came yeah, out. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like you know what I'm saying? I, like, I like them too. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of producers that yeah, I. One person I used to love, man, growing up. You know, coming younger is uh, Manny Fresh. Yeah, that yeah. was like dog. Manny Fresh. He brought. He just brought us like like they. Said, I was watching um a show the other day, and they said like at the time at the time where music was slower and this and that, and Manny Fresh and the Hot Boys, they came and sped that shit up, man. And he's like, fuck, because everybody was tired of. Like the death of Biggie and Tupac brought such a gloom over the uh, rap industry that that Hot Boys was fresh and new. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Master P was coming out with stuff and this and that, but you know what I'm saying. It was some of a lot of it was reminiscent of pop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and like like they had stories and this and that, and it was still a little bit dark. 
But when Manny Fresh and them came on there, they was like, nigga, the niggas that was selling dope and getting money off of it and didn't give a fuck about the world. Like, fuck that. Like, yeah. nigga, we here to party. I six. I was, what, 10? So, uh... How do you compare the death of Tupac and Nipsey? Because I, I think my generation kind of felt the Nipsey like how y'all probably felt about Pac. Death. Okay, the difference about Nipsey and uh, the Nipsey death and the Pac death is that at the time, Tupac was on top of the world. He was the True. dopest rapper. That was like, see, like, reason why I, I, a death is always bad and it affects people badly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't, but on some for real shit, this man. It was like if uh, if Drake got killed right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a nigga that's on top of his game. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers didn't really start fucking with Nip like that. Yeah. Until until he motherfucking died. Yeah, that's that's true. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like and and like like you know what I'm saying? Like somebody else, my boy Smooth, Smoothie Lou. Mm -hmm. He was uh constantly saying to me like, yeah, Nip dope as hell, Nip dope as hell, and I was just like, man, I'm like. I ain't really. I'm like I wasn't feeling them like that, and yeah. then until until like a few people came to me like dope, dope as hell. Yeah. And one that's that's what's so fucked up about it is because I just had started really listening to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I went and you know like I'm the type of motherfucker. You say something to me, and I'm like I ain't feeling them like that, like this and that. Ooh. And then you you tell me what you feel about them, and you gonna make me yeah, go go, ahead go look. Yeah. yeah. So. And one night I might YouTube all this motherfucking songs like why does this nigga feel this way? Cause Man. I'm just an artist like that. Man. And I just wanna know what's going on. And so so I and I was just like, damn. I listened to a few songs like, oh yeah, this nigga be talking that shit. Yeah, cause and I started listening to him like twenty twelve. Like when I went to Texas, that's when I started listening yeah, to him with the yeah. whole Crenshaw album because he was selling it for a honey and all that junk. Yeah, and that's what amazed me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and sometimes I be thinking that like dudes just be cool with dudes. Cause I just thought Jay-Z was just cool with him and wanted to get him some attention, or he had his hand, he had a bag in on what was going on with him. Yeah. And then so I thought that uh that's the reason why Jay-Z bought all them CDs yeah, yeah, from yeah. him. But Jay Z said, Jay Z said he really bought it from him because he's like, for a person to come up with a marketing tool like that. Yeah, hell yeah. You know for what real. I'm saying? Like he was like, shit, he wanted to support that, and that's some real shit. I think he like the biggest rapper that passed away. You know, in my time, in my, yeah. like you know, what I'm saying. I mean, of course, I was around for Tupac, but when Tupac passed away, but I was young as hell. You know, what I'm saying I knew about mm -hmm. Tupac. I listened yeah. to Tupac. He my favorite rapper and shit, yeah. but. I was young as hell, but when the Nipsey shit, like, my God man. damn, that's fucked up, man. You know how that shit happened to a nigga. But they go again and say, like, when you be in that hood, you got niggas that, like you say, somebody mm -hmm. who listen to you constantly, like, damn, let's, man, fuck this nigga. Yeah. But he probably was seeing this nigga constantly in the hood, getting love, like, man, fuck him. And like Boosie said, your girl start listening to him, your sister listen to him, yeah. your mama love this nigga, like, man, fuck him, for yeah. real. And sometimes, but sometimes. <laughs> that's fucked up. Sometimes you got to listen to the old people to realize what's going on, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And if you listen to, uh, like, like we, like in real time, it never seemed as serious as it, it really is sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Some of the things that might be going on. Yeah. And then you, and like, like you got, uh, it was a song by uh, uh, Bob Marley, Redemption mm -hmm. Song. Yeah, yeah. And like in Redemption Song, he say, how long will they uh, kill our prophets while we st stand aside and look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some say it's just a part of it. We got to fulfill the book. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying, and like a lot of times, like shit, shit do be bigger, and sometimes it don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but like when pieces of the puzzle start falling in place, and you just be looking at it like, damn, you know what I'm saying. Everybody, everybody don't want to seem like that dude is reaching. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But sometimes, in my eyes, it's okay to reach. Yeah, for real, yeah. for real. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying, because flat out, they'd be able to pull like people would be able to pull wool over your eyes if if you're not reaching. I, and this is coming from a man who was raised by. A Muslim father and a Christian mother, <laughs> yeah. and my father he helped start the nation of Islam. So, oh yeah, for you know sure. Yeah. So, and like my dad was deep into that shit, man. Like teaching me about Muhammad. I mean, that my, shit? My, uh, Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad that and the whole yeah. No, or my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> 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 but no, he had, you know, he was real deep into the whole nation of Islam and stuff like yeah. that. Had me reading okay. the uh, Malcolm X autobiography and all that stuff, and yeah. just you know, what I'm saying Elijah Muhammad. Islam, you know what Islam mean? What it? Peace. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's and it like like uh, like um, one day Christianity, and then she was like, and she was talking to uh, me, and she was saying, I'm saying like, like Allah can't do nothing for me. Yeah. I like can't do nothing for me. Just kept saying that. So I looked at her and I say, look. I was like, do you know what you're saying? I was like, I thought you believed in God. She yeah. was like, I do. 
I was like, uh, say God in Arabic. Yeah. I was like, I pulled out a dictionary, huh? Yeah. And I showed it to her. I was like, this is the Arabic. I was like, this is the Arabic word for God. Yeah. So you just told me that God can't do nothing for you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, watch what you say. You know yeah, what I'm sure, saying? Yeah. Like, and I'm talking about like, man, I used to win. Like, my mother and my father used to debate all the time. And I like, bet. I'm the only <laughs> one who ever won that, won that debate. <laughs> you feel me? Because I sat back and I, and I, like, I read about stuff. You know what I'm saying? I always, I'm not saying I'm no, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a Muslim. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe in a higher power. But For sure. you just got to be smart about your decision. Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, man. We're not going to church, even though it's Sunday. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right, well, sure, I got a little part, man, of the podcast I call Top 3, man. So you give me your top three to whatever I, category I give you. <laughs> <laughs> so this first one, top three rappers, man, just period. My uh, my top three rappers. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, it, it, it ain't gotta be like you know, you know what the, it's the top, top three people you enjoy. I, but like, but like, I also for real, for real, like, is one of them questions gonna be top three Detroit rappers? <laughs> it may be. <laughs> I already know it is. Cause I was just gonna, cause like I'm, I'm really, I'm really pushing for the city right now. I was top three Detroit rappers. It, it so, on so, there. Cause I, I, cause I was gonna, I was just gonna sit back and say like, well, my top d three Detroit rappers. Yeah. But I give you my top three since you're gonna. Give it can me be one. both. It can be both. I got both of them on there. Okay. Um, my top three uh rappers. You, you already know it's pop, mm. and then we gonna um, we gonna uh categorize. That's gonna be a national rapper, so uh, I'm gonna say Eminem. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pac, Eminem, and who else? Because there's so many rappers that I like. Yeah. You know? But but you, did you know I didn't like Jay Z when he yeah. came out? No, I don't think. <laughs> for, I think it took time for people to like Jay Z. Yeah, exactly. But, I think it took time. But like my third, my, my third one, I like. I gotta pick somebody. It's like. Somebody weird is <laughs> for real, for real. Cause like I like a lot of rappers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I find I find um, uh, talent in a lot of different people in different styles. But uh, my brother gonna hate that I say this. Kendrick Lamar. Oh yeah, Kendrick Lamar Cole. Shit. My brother can't stand Kendrick. What? He's like, man, this motherfucker's voice. Kendrick Cole, man, I like Kendrick. He be man. doing all that real <laughs> shit. Yeah, Nas, my yeah. dog, man. I love Nas, man. But top three Detroit rappers. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, wifely. Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta check him out. That's my son. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He cold. Okay. I ain't even gonna lie. That's what's and up. And then I got uh, Baby D. Mm -hmm. I work with him too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But uh, who else I like? That, that I'm gonna name somebody that I don't fuck with. But but on some for real shit, I'm gonna go with Sada Baby. Okay. Sada Baby. I could, I could say, I, I never seen his performances, but I'm quite sure he's a good ass performer, dog, on, on, on live performance. Man, I, I ain't never been to one of his performances, <laughs> I but I sat back and I watched him. Like, videos and shit. Yeah, he do his thing. Cause he's the hoop, but he's the hoop. Um, yeah, against my brother. My that, brother used to play against him a lot, like in his young days and stuff. That, what, he was on teams and stuff? Hey, you and stuff like that. Oh, I ain't not. Not far no high school, but he used to play uh, in like little leagues and stuff or whatever. Yeah, but like, I, that's why I be, I, like, I be, um, like, he. You know what I'm saying? Like he be, I be seeing it. like to me, I ain't gonna lie. This boy, he got a he got a J on him, but he be looking <laughs> wild as hell yeah, when he go yeah, to the yeah. hole and he and he be fucking niggas up. Yeah. That's what be tripping me out. I'm like, yeah, my brother ain't gonna be with straight. Yeah, hey. that boy, I ain't gonna lie. That he didn't. I just sat back and watch him on what's his name. He be like, he throw that three up like it's nothing, <laughs> like it's butter. I'm talking about like <laughs> just hitting that bitch right. But then you got. Then like, but when he goes to the hole, you be looking. I'm like, damn, is is the defenders confused the way he moving and this and <laughs> that? Moving like how he be dancing and shit. It might be because of the dreads or whatever. But Man. that nigga, you know, I be trying to pick people who affected my life too. You know oh, what yeah, I'm saying? Like, sure. like music that I be sitting back think, thinking about. But um, somebody that affected my life strongly is R. Kelly. Like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> silly, man. R. Kelly has it. Be like, Kelly. But like, I ain't bullshitting the early R. Kelly dog. Was good dope. Man, that he was, I, I ain't gonna lie, he was the shit. Hell yeah, he was. For real. But he was putting spirits in them songs because I was freaking the shit out of bitches. <laughs> like, damn, I think I peed on a couple of hoes. For real. So he put them spirits inside that. So I, Q, you over there laughing, you done peed on a couple of girls too. 
So I come messing with you. No, let me quit. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting, man. Anybody who been peed on before and this or that, man, if you no. didn't like it, man, I was not trying to offend you. Like, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? Watch this shit like, yeah, this motherfucker pee all my Yeah, mine. yeah, Like, I never listened to it. They're going to be having a band to spit her, so I'll be loving it, too. Like, shit, they know about it. Man, it's For real, dog. for real. But, um... Um, you said, we was on R and B singers. Yeah, you said Nia Baker and R Kelly. I was serious about R Kelly. R Kelly yeah, was sweet. Dope, yeah, yeah. He was dope. Uh, and Aaliyah. Okay, that's what's up. I'm gonna say Aaliyah. All right, this, this last thing go to rap. Uh, top three rap cities. Top three rap cities. Mm -hmm. Detroit number one. You the first one I asked this question to too. Yeah, uh, Detroit is number one. Like, like I, you know, I'm For from sure. here. Hell yeah. And like I ain't seen it. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, you know what's so crazy is that a lot of people don't know that, like, it's a lot of good battle rappers come out this city. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Calico, shit. No, I'm, I'm not I'm talking about the city I'm about to say. Okay. But, like, I ain't, and, like, a lot of people don't, I don't know why they not really respect it, because I've seen a lot of, but uh, Pontiac. Okay. Pontiac. Yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that, that's crazy, because Pontiac, uh, like, from what I heard, like, Blade really got that song from um, some dudes in Pontiac, but I ain't sure. Yeah. I ain't never, nobody never confirmed that. Okay. And this and that, but um, I heard them dudes was working with uh, Blade. And then they got uh, one of my favorite uh, battle rappers from out of uh, Pontiac. Um, what's his name? Um, Ill Will? No, not Ill Will. The other dude. Uh, uh, the little skinny one. Um, I think I need to talk about. With the big head. I think I know you talking about. Uh, Damn, JC. JC, yeah, yeah, JC, yeah. Light yeah, skin dude, yeah, he cold. Yeah, he got, yeah, he got bars. Yeah, I like him. Like he, put, he put very precise, and he remind me of this dude I grew up with and shit. Yeah. You know, but um, and you, you gotta, uh, you gotta give it, you gotta give it up to New York. Yeah. Because that's where it, it started, started from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it started from. But everybody would say that. Yeah. I'm gonna say Compton. Okay. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, say yeah. Compton because. Cause of Dr. Dre, you okay. know what I'm saying. You got to give it up to a, a producer. Like it's a lot of cities that yeah. they got a lot of good. What's the name? You know what I'm saying. All right, uh, top three TV shows. Top three TV shows: uh, Snowfall, Animal Kingdom, and Power. Yeah, Snowfall is the shit, boy. I can't wait for season. You didn't watch Animal, Animal Kingdom? I gotta get on that. My girl uh, Pops told me about that shit. Yeah, I gotta get on Animal Kingdom. You gotta know about Smurf and yeah. um, Pope with Smurf. I ain't gonna tell you. Gonna <laughs> all right, take all right. Stick on TV show top three TV show themes, theme music. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going my shit. My shit is motherfucking Fresh Prince, uh -huh. Golden Girls, yeah, <laughs> and Sanford and Son. Okay, that's I got put. I got to throw in Living Color in that shit too, though. That's good. That's good. Uh, greatest American Hero. Okay. <laughs> See, you don't know about nope, that. Nope, nope, I got it. <laughs> Look at what happened to me. I can't believe it, my. Y'all got to look it up. But, uh, uh, Greatest American Hero. I, I give it up to, uh, I ain't gonna lie. But it was the Fresh Prince uh, thing. Yeah, so, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? My, and my baby mama made me like that because she wrapped it all the way through. I was like, what the fuck you know this shit? <laughs> shit. And I was just like, I listened to it. I was like, damn, that's a cold little what's name. Because yeah. I always looked at it like, I, I looked at it like he remade one of his uh, parents just don't understand. Yeah, over. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm Hell saying? Yeah. And then when I listened to it, I was like, damn, he did the damn thing. Hell yeah. Because kids today, they, they listen to it. I mean, they rap that yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. That shit go down forever. And then, um, what's my third one? Um, we got to give it up to Peels Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking every uh, the Cosby show. I'm picking everybody who was in the uh, look. Tupac and he got charged with rape. Uh, R. Kelly got charged with statutory rape, and then Bill Cosby he gave bitches pills. Man, they, I ain't gonna lie. The uh, uh, Me Too movement is gonna be attacking me. Man, hell no, man. For real. All right, man. Last one for top three, man. Top three movies. Top three movies. Yeah. Man, um, you gotta give it to. Uh, no, that fucked up our. I ain't gonna lie, that fucked. The Godfather, because The Godfather was about family. Mm -hmm. It was about family. A lot of people just say it's a gangster movie, but that movie was really about family. Okay. And um, what else? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. First uh, movie, <laughs> movie that made me cry, nigga. Yeah. It's, it's ministers aside. I ain't <laughs> That's shit, man. That was the first movie a motherfucker died in at the yeah. end. Like, like we skipped school to go see that <laughs> shit. 
Like, I ain't gonna lie, we came back to school mad as hell, like, with our Glocks on us. Hell yeah. Like, I ain't gonna lie, we was, I ain't gonna lie, SC was a gladiator house. Man. But, um, Minister Society and what else? Um, let me see. Movie, movie, movie. Oh, um, what was, uh, X-Men. X-Men? X-Men, uh, not the, uh. The last one was cool, but the one right before that, when that nigga, when you thought Thanos just won, <laughs> that, no, but I, I ain't gonna lie, the last one, the last one, I ain't bullshit. I was, I was fucked up. The uh, Iron Man died. No, you talking about what's that? Avengers. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I say like, oh. X Men because I love X Men. Yeah. I love X Men, but I'm. T- I mean, my girl's that Avengers. bitch crying her ass off when what's that died. Swear Iron to God. Man. I swear, I love those. <laughs> nah, like, damn. nah, I don't feel bad. <laughs> I cried too. So. She's that bitch balling, boy. <laughs> we, we, her, uh, her auntie be buying the theaters out when certain movies come out. She's saying, boy, balling, boy. For real, what her auntie do? Buying out theaters and shit. Hell yeah. Y'all over here saying a big dog. <laughs> we over here, uh, uh, Black Panther came out. She bought the theater out. Just making money For off real? that shit. Yeah. yeah. So, shit, all right. Well, we always in the, uh, the podcast. Right, here we go. On motherfucking segment called High Moment or Drunk Moment. So, you can pick both. One. Whichever one. And it, 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 some funny shit that happened during this time. Um, during this time? Like during the, your, drunk, your drunk moment or your hot oh, moment. Oh, okay. Like uh, it, it could be like some, man, it, it's whatever. My life is a movie, man. I ain't even <laughs> going to lie, man. I'm, I'm just trying to. But, oh, okay. Now, look, I got this friend, right? It's, this kind of both, though. Yeah. I ain't even going to lie. Me and, me and this friend, we chilling, right? Yeah. <laughs> we We... I didn't call y'all right. Don't tell the story, cuz. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, where to God is that friend calling me? Duh. I swear to God. I swear to God. I might not even tell this story. For real. For real, cuz I can't say who it is. But, but my friend, man. My friend, you know, I don't judge people. You know what I'm saying? I don't judge people and the things that they do. You know what I'm saying? What you do to, what you do to have fun, that's you. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? But if I don't do it, I don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so me and this friend, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we had this friend. We, I'm already blowed out and drunk. I drunk a wine, and then um, we was drinking these. Uh, we was drinking these uh, bags. These bags. Uh, um, you know, that to drink no more of these bitches. I'm blowed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I only drunk like a half of one. I'm like, and that bitch was strong. Yeah. He steady drinking. You know what I'm saying? So. So on the way home and shit, like me and his friend, we be doing music together and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so this motherfucker said to me, he look over at me, he's like, man, I really just wanna, I wanna like, you don't know how, you don't know how this uh, this this coke <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this Adderall be having me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I don't wanna know. <laughs> you feel me? He like, man. He's like, look, bro. He's like, look, bro. I'm telling you. He's like, man, I'm about to go ahead. And uh, he was like, man, I'm about to go get this Coke, man. He's like, man, he's like, I'm about to pay you this money. You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, but man, I want to just really go in the zone, man. <laughs> Won't you do a bump? That's what he called yeah, a line. Yeah. I looked at this motherfucker. <laughs> I looked at this motherfucker like, not nah, me. <laughs> I don't smoke weed. Yeah. I barely drink. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm buzzed right now. We done just drunk like a half a <laughs> cup of alcohol and shit. You know what I'm saying? But this motherfucker asked me to do some coke or some Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and that's my how. Mo- that's like my how head drunk. Mo- <laughs> like I'm like I looked at this motherfucker. I'm talking about this motherfucker actually was begging me to do this <laughs> shit. And I was like, how could you ask me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The guy that don't even I like nigga. I smoke Man. weed and go crazy. I get yeah. paranoid in a bitch. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? How could you ask me? I'm talking about like this motherfucker said, all right, you better stay up all night with me. <laughs> Like that, cause we about to do me, we about to do a few songs. He like, I'm like, man, everybody about to fall asleep and shit. But I did. Man, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I fall asleep recording this nigga. <laughs> I think like, see, you should have did that bump, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Nah. We would have got a classic. Yeah, yeah, he got a classic though. He ain't gonna nah, lie. That's funny as hell, man. But shit, man. Hey, what? Uh, give me uh, your uh, your social media stuff as far as they can follow you, man. Man, I don't even know it, man. Like, uh, <laughs> my shit. I don't know which which page I want. Uh, oh. I don't know which page I'm working off of, but I have Ed Bag Movement. <laughs> yeah. And I also have uh at P O G the Giant. I got a couple pages that I don't forgot the password <laughs> to that I can't get to, but my shit is P O G the Giant Walker on, on Facebook. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Is is my Facebook is not entertaining. <laughs> but if you want to get at me to uh go ahead and um 
and just uh, fuck with me as far as uh, uh, production. You can uh, leave me a message or something. I'll get back with you. But you go to YouTube, watch all my videos, man. Uh, a lot, some of them under Bag Movie, some under uh, under uh, POG the Giant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, I got Five This Day out there. That was a uh, hey, that was a nice little track. Though. Yeah, like, that was a labor like, of love. That, that was yeah. a labor of love. Like you know what I'm saying? I, I really wanted to uh, do something like. For the fathers, you know what I'm saying? As fathers, if we be out here and we hustle hard for our kids, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. like our kids get us motherfucking fucked up ties and bullshit ass socks, I wanted to make them cry <laughs> and say, like, damn, I might get daddy a chicken sandwich. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Popeyes. Popeyes <laughs> this time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, shit, someday the nigga appreciate or something. Yeah, Just yeah. leave me the fuck alone on uh, Father's Day. For real. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but like, yeah, you could, uh, my, um, the spit hustle, the spit hustle is T H A S P I T H U S T L E. Okay. Uh, you, uh, that's that's my album. This um on there, you know what I'm saying? On so, Spotify. Yeah, it's on Spotify and it's on uh, Apple Music. It's on a few streaming outlets. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Go stream my shit. Get a nigga some money, man. Hell yeah, for, for sure. For real, for real. Or come spend some money at the studio. Shit. Hell yeah, shit. I'll be over there in a couple couple about money. Shit, money. I'm about too. to open a dispensary. Oh, for real? No, I'm bullshit. Oh, what's that? But, uh, <laughs> nigga, cute like what? <laughs> <laughs> but also real, also for real shit. Like, man, my my party bus would be on the road in a couple, uh, in probably about a month. In okay. Atlanta, so you know what I'm saying? Me and my brother got a party bus. We gonna fuck with me on that too. That's what's up. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Shit. So we're gonna be doing a and lot of shit. And then be on the lookout for Wively, Baby D, uh, uh, Young Skeech, okay, um, uh, Joe Kane and uh, Malik. Yeah. You feel me? So that's that's them all the people. Are, oh, don't forget my nigga, RC Wayne County. You know what I'm saying? He got a, he got a project coming out pretty soon and shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, don't don't forget about Drippy Steve. Them all projects is gonna give me money. Hell so yeah. so please please bring your ass to <laughs> to Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. You know Hell what I'm yeah. saying? And stream. I should just type my shit in on Google. Anything Hell like yeah. any one of them names. Shit, that's support, gonna give me nigga, money because that's my publishing and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Hell and yeah. don't forget Shy. He gonna buy a beat one day. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, man. I'm gonna stop getting free beats off YouTube one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. as I get my nigga a little name, I'm out there. As long as, 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 as y'all get let me get a uh podcast full of strippers <laughs> <laughs> look at yeah. Q he over there like yeah I'm the hood Howard Stern <laughs> like shit that's what, bring some midgets too <laughs> <laughs> Sit up my whole fucking stomach real quick. <laughs> bring, some, bring some slow kids too like shit bring chicken men through this bitch <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yeah. stupid hell, man. I ain't gonna lie. They, it's a dude out here. He got a, a whole song with Chicken Man. It's like the one nigga uh, T-shirt, uh, little T or some shit. Like he got a whole little video, a T-shirt, little small T-shirt. Hey, matter of fact, they, dog, young T-shirt or some shit. Look it up, dog. For, shit, hey, look, stupid as hell. I got, I got a nephew, man. His, <laughs> we used to call him Chicken Man, <laughs> and he from this hood too. You feel me? <laughs> and this nigga hate the fact that they call that nigga, nigga chick. And, and Chicken Man, and you know what's so crazy? Chicken Man is very so homeboy. Man, that's you feel me? And like I'm talking about, I'm talking about my nephew Chicken Man. Yeah. He he cool with Vezo and shit. And this nigga, this nigga, <laughs> he hate the fact that they call that nigga Chicken Man. He like, he be like, oh, well, he, like I said, I said something about Chicken Man one time. He like, <laughs> he said his real name. He, he be like, oh, his real name Malik. I think he's like, who you talking about, Malik? Yeah. Like that. I was like, no, yeah. That's, I was like, Chicken Man. He's like, I was like, oh. I'm like, oh, oh my God. He's like, that nigga named Malik. I'm Chicken Man, nigga. Duh, that's For real. Like, they call chicken it. Chicken Man out of this bitch, man. Because he done fucked his name up. You man. know what I'm saying? It meant something good. Nah, that nigga. But shit, but man. Anyway, that's a You got to bring your, uh, you got to bring what's in them here through, too, man. Joe Kane and Malik and shit. Y'all come through yeah. and do part part two for your shit. And they were supposed to come, but, man, I ain't going to lie, man. We had a long night in the studio, bro. No, that's how it should be. Hey, y'all be the best times, dog. Getting in the studio, getting blown. Who's trying to wrap it up on me, man? No, I'm saying. Look at him. You see what he doing? <laughs> hey, I'm doing the DJ trying, Envy shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, he trying, he trying to cut me off. Like, shit, our sponsors uh, is, is, is <laughs> the, the uh, Lions <laughs> is the Lions football game. I'm trying to get to it. I don't give a fuck. Well, shit, we, <laughs> we we about to we about to talk some more, man. I, I got thirty one minutes. Shit, she got me up. Shit, I, man, I stayed up to four o'clock in the morning last night. Shit, no, we about to we shit. about to record some more. Shit, fuck that. That nigga said he going to cancel this bitch. I'm about to interview you, nigga. Man, for real, what started you to rapping? Shit, nigga. how long you been coaching? 
Hey, low key. Dude. Like shit. I had no career plan. You didn't know this shit wasn't consistent. Yeah, I had no career plan. You should have for production, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Man, I wish. I ain't gonna lie. I real. wish that's because I ain't gonna lie. When I stopped, when I got about these streets and shit, like shit, I was like, man. I need some consistent money, you know what I'm saying? Like shit, I don't like working for people. Hell no. Also for real like, shit. I get the so. job every day thinking of a motherfucking and, million dollar plan. Man, but I, I really want. <laughs> what else I want to do? I want to congratulate you on your show, man. Oh, yeah, for for sure. real, because you're a oh, real yeah. nigga, and oh, yeah. and we need this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I want to congratulate. The Hood Howard Stern mm-hmm. on his uh, podcast nomination. Yep, oh, yeah. I seen that. Watch that shit. Yeah, <laughs> boy, I pay attention, man. You think I ain't? Hell yeah. You feel me? You know, yeah. I was I was gonna do that when we. Matter of fact, the awards will be in Charlotte and shit. What October? What's the date? October fourth. So yeah, be on the lookout for that oh, shit. I'm supposed to talk to you. Yeah, I'm supposed to talk to you. <laughs> well, I'm fucking the show up. <laughs> he got nominated for two of them things. Hey, yeah. matter of fact, go uh, if you go on Facebook, type the nigga name in. Got uh, got funny ass to fucking uh, clip. To they me. don't know you have nothing to do with this, even though your mic say E Block. <laughs> Hell yeah. Are we on E Block? So yeah, shout out to Hood Howard Stern, Angry Man, Monk Money, Two Gs, all the motherfuckers. Hey, I'm the man. one who uh, kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I was a big what's part of that shit. Look, you know what's so fucked up? <laughs> I'm on your, I'm on your uh, podcast show, but I forgot the name. Same shit as the music. Shout versus everybody. Shout versus everybody. Cause I ain't got goddamn help, niggas. Yeah, all me. Well, exactly. Shout out to Howard Stern, nigga. Oh, I showed up for you. Oh. <laughs> hey, delete all this shit. I need money for this interview. <laughs> for real. But look, you gotta get you some uh uh shout versus everybody stickers. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cover this shit up right here. So. <laughs> get my fucking banner back there, some shit, nigga. For real. This where y'all record E Block too? Hell yeah. yeah. That nigga be right here, shit. No, you don't. Hell yeah. So shot 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 be doing the engineering? No, I'll be I'll be at work. Oh, for real? <laughs> he do that shit. You do the engineer and the listening? <laughs> we live right now? <laughs> oh, I was about to say, I'm, in here. I'm interviewing y'all. Like, Hell yeah. told y'all, got you. Hell yeah, For nigga. real, nigga. But yeah, the music shit started from having a kid. The basketball shit, because I'm just a hooper. So that shit was like, nigga, hey, I want to still do this shit. My girl was a uh, teacher at the school. Like, they need a coach. I came in. Shit, got in Oh, you got you a teacher? She a pre-K teacher, yep. Boy, <laughs> So, Look at the auntie buying out uh, theaters. His girl a teacher. He a coach. Hell yeah. Shit, I knew the Detroit uh, public schools no. is corrupted. We trying to do some so shit. Look dog. at him. He like I'm gonna lose my job. Yeah. Shut the fuck no, up. No, I'm not her school no more. Shit, fuck her school. Fuck Bradford. Nigga. Shit. <laughs> Bradford. I, but I was at Bradford Academy. Now I'm at uh right here on the Valley and Helen. They, at Jefferson Douglas. They, they cat. Oh, they Academy Charter School. Charter School. Hell yeah. So fuck oh, okay. them. Oh, so fuck you can the, say fuck them because they AD, uh, Charter School. Nigga, fuck the coach, the high school coach. Oh, oh. nigga, I won a championship. Nigga, fuck y'all. Yep. They, yep. they watching your podcast <laughs> right now. Hell yeah. So now, nigga, shit, we got the the podcast shit, got the clothing line, got the AU team about to start. For real? Still doing the music. Can I get a job? What? Don't y'all need some music for something? <laughs> shit, what the fuck? Like, damn, yeah, can shit. I get a job? Come, I... Do it, uh, shit, we can do an intro, nigga. Original beat, gotta have an intro. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Rap on that and shit. And the school right? paying, right? School paying, hell yeah. Hell yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah, so I got what? Way. Two girls teams, two boys teams, and then the co-ed. So shit, yeah. we get money out here for that shit. Oh shit! So shit, once I want somebody... a twenty-eight dollar, a twenty-eight hundred dollar check, <laughs> yeah, thirty-six, yeah. a thirty-two hundred dollar check. Hell shit, yeah, where you get that shit? Christmas man. time coming, shit. Yeah, it's uh, all that shit. Hell yeah, I started Christmas shopping already. Man. Shit, I never do that shit till like two weeks before. Man, fuck that. <laughs> Being fuck, a bitch with I got, everybody. Look, I got. I'm about to tell my age, but I don't give a fuck. I got four kids yeah. and two uh, grandchildren. And that, granddaddy, yeah, yeah, yeah nigga, shit, granddaddy, yeah. bad movement, and granddaddy, they, pog, a giant. They be like, granddaddy has some young hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Dog. <laughs> my daughter and my and my daughter and my granddaughter are the same age. My, I don't, I'm so for real shit. I ain't even gonna lie. My granddaughter will be three in January. My daughter will be three uh, in October. <laughs> dog, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah like, dog, my shit. son. Three. I go to school with my auntie. Shit, <laughs> you know a few people who's who went to school with their aunties and shit. Hell yeah, shit. and their grandmas was a trip, wasn't it? Man, for real. Shit, I almost fucked around. Shit, Q ain't three years old. I said three, seven years older than me and shit. We almost was able to go to school together for a oh, little bit. Shit. For real. <laughs> That's yeah. what's up. Hell yeah, nigga. Q came out this bitch like, what up, no? Oh, nigga, yeah. motherfucker, uh, brother drinking 40 ounces and shit while that nigga getting back, fucking big bottles. He, he had you on some bullshit, then. What? Oh, back then? Yeah. No, I ain't remember. I thought I, when, you, when he was first young. I ain't know that I nigga until I was 18, for real, for real. For real? I knew him, but that nigga ain't fuck with me. 
<laughs> and Tommy came of age and shit like, oh, you can hang out there, you go to strip club, yeah. what up, nigga? How you doing? <laughs> like, what it look like? Like shit. Oh, okay, I'll oh, fuck with my nephew. Like, and then they come slap you on your I see, head. I see a nigga on Christmas and shit. Like, what up, cuz? What up, Thanksgiving? What up, homie? <laughs> <laughs> nigga come up my mom crib with cuz. What up, dog? <laughs> nigga turn eighteen. Like, oh, this nigga Quincy cool. Nigga uh, kill cool and shit. You I know what that was? What up? See, my nephew be having them young hoes. <laughs> <laughs> like shit. Well, I'm about to hit, look. I'm about to go hit some of them young hoes. My nephew, my nephew, 23. Shit. I'm about to hit some of these bitches. See, but that, by the time I start hanging out, that nigga start chilling and shit, dog. So yeah. then when I didn't say anything, my brother, that nigga wanted to hang out. Man, I'm chilling. Yeah, I gotta stop fucking with these little 20 year olds. Nah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in this bitch about to get married and shit, so ain't no hangout. I mean, yeah. I still hang out, but shit. Yeah, you can't even fuck with a bitch that's 28 no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real, me too be coming around like, shit, ain't you almost 40? <laughs> like, you too old for her. Duh, you silly as hell. For man. real though, nigga. Hey, well, shit, they done fucked the game up. Like, on some real shit, you ain't got to, I ain't talking about no young hoes. I ain't talking about no underage hoes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, they ain't, yeah. I mean, underage women. Yeah, if I say hoes. Because, like, when I, but when I was 23, they used to be hoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, underage oh, how, hoes. So, all right, nigga, real quick, dog. How, uh, you think you would, like, with, tomorrow, uh, getting girls and shit? Social media in your high school days, that shit would fuck you up, wouldn't it? Man, <laughs> so, social, media, social media, we wouldn't even, like, like, on some for real shit, it ain't like we didn't have com computers, like, I'm from the motherfucking ice age, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We had computers <laughs> but, and, like, it, we had the internet, yeah. actually, like, my, I had a homeboy, man, on some for real shit, we used to call this nigga the internet pimp, yeah. on some for real shit, back when, back when the internet, like, like you didn't even really have pictures or nothing mm -hmm. on that shit, and motherfuckers just type. This nigga used to be on the internet. Fuck, like he'd be. This nigga would be in Texas. He, <laughs> this nigga. Oh man, I gotta tell this story. Man. <laughs> this nigga. The one time, this nigga, he met a bitch off the internet, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He goes, he goes to Texas. He goes to Texas with this bitch. <laughs> so this nigga is in Texas, right, on all of this land. And this bitch, when he get down there, after they didn't have they, a couple of days of sexual bliss and all of this, <laughs> comes find out this, this bitch is married. Damn. But uh, but they separated. Yeah. The husband is right. He say this nigga riding around. Duh, yeah, he, he, but like he used to, he'd met a he'd met a lot of females off of the internet. I ain't gonna say nothing else like yeah. th that will incriminate <laughs> him. Yeah. What type of females he met? But he didn't met a few females yeah, off on the that, internet. Niggas on the internet hard. My cousin used to be on that mud all the time. Man, sending him pictures of a bum ass playing the NBA and shit. He like seventeen. Fuck with some 22 year old chick and shit. Meet her and shit. They both ain't the person they ain't sent pictures of. This bitch fast as hell looking like Biggie and shit. This nigga, this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> talking, talking about he Billy they, D. Williams. They both didn't catfish each other and shit and mad. Like, nigga, you mad? You catfish her? Yeah, that, nigga, that nigga sending pictures of Idris Alba. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. For real. Fuck. I mean, I sent a uh, chick a picture. I'm 14. I sent a bitch a picture of Corey McGinney and shit. This nigga played in the league. Like, oh, I'm, that nigga, he ain't known in the league like that. Man, I ain't <laughs> never, I ain't never met a female uh, off the internet. Mm -hmm. Like, like I ain't never got. I, I just haven't. Like, I done met females and then be like, oh, okay, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And then like we talked, they didn't got at me across the internet. But it ain't, it ain't no like, oh yeah, I never seen this bitch before a day in my life and this and that. Ooh, yeah. like I don't, don't get me wrong, I done pop my shot. Yeah, hell you yeah. know what I'm saying. And like they, I ain't get turned on every time. But I'm just saying, it just it just felt always felt weird to me. Hell yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, oh, I'm about to go meet this girl I met on the internet. Like. Yeah. That's some it was <laughs> cause in our day that was perverted shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, that shit normal, nah nigga shit. Yeah. Facebook got fucking dating part of the other shit, so that shit normal as hell. Man, nah. that's crazy as hell. Like to meet a motherfucker off a website. Cause you could be whoever you wanna be on the fucking website. Like you could see in the right pictures and all that shit. And like you could lie to a bitch and cause that's what my nigga used to do. He used to <laughs> lie to a bitch and tell him that he was Actually, Superman, <laughs> and I'm talking. He would get the pussy, and they would find out. Like shit, Clark Kent is Superman. <laughs> you feel me? Not motherfucking Craig. Nigga. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shit, man. I didn't know. I'm, I'm closing out. Duh. Okay. Gotta go watch the Lions. Gotta go have Sunday dinner with my other family and shit. I think he said that camera. No, that's oh, your, that's your. Oh, that's me and shit. Oh, so, <laughs> so you got the red camera. I got the blue. Hell yeah, Christmas bloods and shit. Oh no. Nah. <laughs> no nah, man. But shit, I, we gonna uh. 
Get my man back in here. Get him in here with Joe Kane, Malik, and all them man. Do some yeah. other shit. Talk some shit about that shit. Uh, do you, Drink do you, some more motherfucking Y'all don't wine. travel. Travel where? I'm just it's saying. Period. I'm just saying. Shit, like y'all, y'all ain't gonna bring the show out to something. Oh shit. Y'all wouldn't. Is it, shit, you know that be on him. I help you carry the equipment. <laughs> hook it up. I, I, to, I can hook it up, but I don't know how to run this. That had to be e block. Shit, mm-hmm. my shit got. I gotta go mainstream in Detroit first. Then I will get. Out no, this no, 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 no. That's how you gonna go mainstream. You gotta, you gotta do different shit. But drink champs gotta go ahead. And do you need my- management? What up, though? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to be under bag movement management? How nigga, about you, Hood Howard Stone? We about to put a whole coalition together. Nigga, death wrote me and shit like good. Hell, hell yeah. If like you want that. a nigga who gonna be all up in the videos, nigga, <laughs> <laughs> come get bad, nigga. Having you interviewed him every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wear a red suit around this bitch For real How you interviewing me every day like, Hell yeah Like Oh uh, yeah uh, Part 5 They got motherfucking G.O.G They going to be like why, hey, why is this hand on the back of the uh, interview <laughs> no. Interviewer neck like, No you stupid man, bro. <laughs> Hell no nah. But shit man Till but, the meantime Till the next time Stay off cocaine Don't meet bitches on the internet <laughs> <laughs> This motherfucker, <laughs> he just summed it up oh, like, yeah. stay off the cocaine. Don't look, cocaine, kids, nigga. look, kids, peer pressure is a motherfucker, nigga. and I'm telling you, it will not happen to me. Be be prepared in the studio. Yep. And uh, shit, just don't fuck up with niggas, man. Exactly, for uh, real. Yeah. And like I said, I want my motherfucking money. Oh yeah, yeah, them niggas cash up this nigga's money, dog. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, nigga, your cash out, your phone ain't working. <laughs> oh hell, <laughs> man. I'm straight, baby. I'm straight, baby. Hey, man. This is Shoppers Everybody Podcast, man. Peace out.